I hate when I do that when I go downstairs to piss right before I, I do gotta, this. Got to catch your breath for a second. <sighs> okay. So do you still get kind of psyched up a little bit before each one? Oh, it's on. Okay. Yeah. Do I get what? Do you get a little psyched up before this? Yeah. Uh, man, I try to get out of my head as much as possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, say if I have someone in here that I'm doing a podcast with that I've I've got a lot of pressure. I got to get the right conversation. This is a big opportunity kind right. of thing. Then, you know, those, I don't like that feeling. But right. I feel like the best time is when you just sit in here and you just shoot the shit. You know right. what I mean? Like, whatever, you know. And then uh, I let the guests do it themselves. That way, if it's a bad podcast, I'm like, it wasn't wasn't me. <laughs> I tried, man. I tried. I had one of those a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it was a rough one. Was it? Uh, yeah, I don't well, want to throw it too much more into the bus. I hope this doesn't suck. Let's let's hope not. <laughs> if not, you can make a meme about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, man, thank you. You're the first meme guy that's ever been on the podcast. Yeah. Can't honestly say that I ever thought that, you know, you know, in 2018, when we started this podcast, like, one day we're going to get some meme guys in here. I'm, first of all, I'm totally honored to be here. Oh, thank this you. is rad. Thank you. I've been I've been following your stuff for a long time. Uh, but, yeah, me either. Like, I, in January, uh, over the holidays, I'm like, you know what, I'm just kind of bored yeah. with stuff. You know, like, I, I, I do a day job a little bit, but I do it just to make money so that I can go ride. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like I'm not passionate about it. I, I'm good at it. When I'm doing it, it's fun, um, you know, but it's not hard. I yeah. can do it in my sleep, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I was like, I love the motorcycle sh- stuff. I love the lifestyle, everything about it. Like, mm-hmm. how can I just get more involved in it? And, yeah. uh, you know, so over the holidays, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go all in. I don't know what I'm going to do, Yeah. Um, you know, but I'm going to try something and started making a couple of memes in January and it kind of. So how long? Off. How long? I mean, you've been riding quite a while. You were telling me about your family's history, and it's uh, it's pretty in depth. But in regards to like finding a way to come into this scene, way more lighthearted and and way more fun, if yeah. you will, instead of like seriousness, because I know we were talking about earlier at lunch that like the California bike scene like is very even though we don't need to talk about clubs, but it's still kind of more club oriented. Yeah, that has a much more line of seriousness that's going on at, at bike events as opposed to i yeah, can see how you want to break out and make fun of some things and yeah it's it's serious and when people I, I don't get very many people that that come back you know from a meme and they're genuinely pissed off like yeah but i've had a few um you know but my my goal in the whole thing is just to lighten things up you yeah. know like we just take ourselves way too serious uh-huh. like it's it's fucking motorcycles like we buy them we should ride them. If you don't want to ride it, fine. I'm going to make fun of it. Yeah. But, you know, you, you're spending a lot of money on a motorcycle. You know, you're buying the standard Issue. uniform. You know, you got you to have the Simpson helmet. You got to have the Dixon flannel. You know, you got to have the vans. One, that's stage one Dynabro. Absolutely. You got to have the vans. And if you're a Dago Dynabro, you've got to have the tall socks and the cutoff Dickies. Yeah. You know, but... You know, we take everything way too serious. So I'm just trying to lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. most people, you know, 99% of people take it that well, way. Well, that's why whenever you made the one about the camp out, you know, we were talking about it in the car earlier, but a lot of people reached out to me and they're like, man, did you see this dude? Like, I was laughing so hard at myself. And that's the funny thing about <laughs> these is that if nobody ever commented, liked them, yeah. I don't care. Because they make me laugh when I'm making them. Like, yeah. I, I, when we were sitting in the car coming back from lunch, I don't know if you caught it, but I was chuckling a little bit because uh-huh. I found, you know, something occurred to me and I made a meme real quick. And I was just chuckling to myself as we're driving back from lunch. Like, I just, you know, it's funny. It makes me feel, makes me feel better. Yeah, so. and, I, and I feel like, I guess it's something I started noticing about a younger culture than I guess I'm born into at least. Like, uh, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's like a younger culture have what they call vibe checks. Right? Yeah. And I'm just now learning about this for my old ass. Yeah. Is basically. Well, I'm a lot older than you. So. And you know it. So, <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, it, it I, I feel like it's a good way to do it because when a meme is funny and accurate, or even if it's not accurate, but it's accurate to the perception of, of said thing. Yeah. I feel like it's, uh, it's appropriate to like lean back into it because what. W- w- 
not not in any kind of offensive way, but what would it look like for my brand to go try to attack yeah, a you meme can't page? Do that. Yeah, like you everything's going to get turned back into a meme. It's like trying to talk shit to a comedian. Right, basically. you can't do it. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing about comedy. And I don't consider myself a comedian. I'm a total introvert. Yeah, you know. So it's because I've got the phone and I can make. Oh, he's a keyboard warrior. Hey, no, I'm not a keyboard warrior. Like I'm. There's, hey, there's nothing funny. About I'm talking here. Shit about I wrote Waffle twelve miles. <laughs> that's funny though. Like, see, come on. That's it. Like, I made that sitting in the booth at Waffle House today. I was like, this is fucking funny. Yeah. Like, I love this trash. You, you can, like, pretty much get people to follow you across the country on your bike trip through posting memes about that's, the environment that you're... That's it. I was waiting on a good Vegas one, you going through there. Yeah, I we went through there pretty quick, and we... Uh, when I go to Vegas, 99.9% .9 of the time, we'll park in front of Hogs and Heifers, yeah, and then you know just bounce between Hogs and Fremont and yeah. Tall Boys from the liquor store and and uh, we didn't stick around there very long. Mm. We were there for like an hour and a half or something, and that's cool. It was hot as hell, so I think I posted one thing while I was there, but it was one that I had already made. So it was it's not premeditated. It was meme. yeah, you know, <laughs> on, when I'm getting ready to go, if I got a lot of stuff, you know, the majority of these that I make, it's I'm laying in bed. Because mm -hmm. my wife will get mad if I get out of bed too early. It's the weirdest thing. She'll get mad. And she's like, "What? <laughs> where you got to go? Why, you know? Um, so, like, I'll just kind of, I just got to kind of hang out there. You're in, you're in time, or you're in a, what would you call that? Like a, not jail, but like a fucking. Uh, yeah, I'm just, like, I got to be there. You know, I'm a morning person and my wife is an, at, we're 180 It's out. like when you spend a night at your friend's house and you wake up before everybody else in right. the house you're does. Right, like, what the fuck? Do you, yeah, where do I go? But yeah, so I'll, so when I've got to lay there for a little bit, I just, yeah. you know, I scroll to find the bottom of Instagram and I find things mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, that's funny. And, you know, so I'm, <laughs> so a lot of times if I get up, if I wake up really early, you know, I'll lay there and crank out, you know, 10 memes and 15 videos while I'm just laying there. And then, you know, I'll just. I feel like there's a look. lot, there's, there's a lot of content that can be made about all these different uh, areas. And now that, I mean, it, just in, in my head, I'm thinking like, you still got a plethora of things that you could say about Big Will Bagger World and. And equally I went pretty funny. hard on them for a little yeah. while. And, and I think everybody got seasonal? it. Like you got to do it seasonal. I think it was the build up to Daytona because oh, okay. I was I had some serious FOMO of you guys talking about it and then the posters yeah and the posts started coming out and I think that was just me being jealous that I couldn't be there uh -huh. and uh, so yeah I think that was when the big wheel thing was in my head a bunch was right before that because yeah. I assume there was quite oh, a bit of them uh, like it's I feel like there is it's still a thing there it's still a big thing in Phoenix yeah. I yeah. was surprised when, so Arizona Bike Week, we went to the little offshoot show, offshoot show uh, by Cave Creek, mm -hmm. and there was a bunch of them, and there was, there was a vendor, a guy there that still, you know, was building them, and they were, yeah. they were nice, but not my cup of tea, yeah. but, you know, so yeah, that was, I think that was, and a lot of times, just I'll get on a theme it's random, yeah, you know, and then I feel like I just got to run with a series for a little bit, and then, not, then it's old. It's like then, all right. Move do you on. not get like? Because I would imagine like you were just tired of hearing about Fast Life Camp Out Five that you just would want. Like, because me, if I was in your shoes, I'd be like, dude, I want to do anything to just burst this bubble. A little not bit. at all. I was <laughs> jealous that I couldn't go. <laughs> No, I just feel like there could have been. I mean, the the one that made me laugh the most was, I think, the pregnant. Yeah, all the pregnant like trashy women. Yeah, something. that one was good. Yeah, so. Oh man. Yeah, so so to be honest, you know, the very first one I posted was all the kind of big dudes muscular dudes in, in, in the, the Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman. Yeah. costumes, and uh, you took that very well. I was like, okay, like he took it well. <laughs> so now, you know, all the all the. The camp out ones were basically me being jealous that I couldn't be there. Oh, it's so, all good. Yeah. But it was fun. It, it, it made – it was another perspective of, of things that, that made it fun to go to. Um, but it also – like our, our camp out, the whole vibe is fun, laughing. Like we don't really have any kind of people having beef or drama. Like we don't have yeah. fights at it. There's not like, you know, any drama from clubs or anything like that. Like it's literally a come out, have a good time, 
you're in a safe space so you can be as weird as you want as long as you don't touch anybody right and um you know from that point you know like i said the camp house just got that vibe it's and that's the kind of vibe that we always try to put out especially when we do our bike nights and shit it's like we want to make this place fun and chill i mean necess- we don't necessarily want people to come out here and just start talking shit yeah but you if you hang out long enough you'll find out when it's appropriate right you know what i mean yeah and there's so. a fine line like it's it's uh oh yeah that one right there yeah <laughs> And I don't remember where I found that picture. I was like, "Like this, this is it." Hey, it, they, it the, this, the second I saw the picture, I was like, "That's it." That's, that's uh, like Camp Out Five. That's right. <laughs> those uh, those women actually look way better than the women in the area of Oklahoma that we were. Right. But uh, that's right. <laughs> but no, so you're on a bike trip right now, which I thought was rad. That's probably one of the things too that made me really stoked about talking to you. Is I don't know why. I was telling you this in the car earlier. In a, in a version of my mind, I think of a lot of SoCalians. I don't know if that might be a right it way is to put now. it. Uh, pretty much stay within a, a reasonable realm. Every once in a while, you guys get wild and you go to Phoenix. Yeah. But other than that, like that's you've never been past Phoenix. Yeah. I, I'd <laughs> say, you know, I don't. I haven't. I've I've lived in Texas a little bit a long time ago, mm-hmm. going through flight school with the Navy. I lived in Florida for a little bit, going through flight school. But I mean, besides that, I've been in San Diego the whole time. So I don't. I think I have an idea of what the culture, the bike culture, is like yeah. in these places. Um, but I would imagine it's pretty similar. Like for sure, ninety nine percent. I don't want to. We'll say ninety seven percent. Yeah. Of of riders. You know, it's city limits. That's it. That's the way it is here, too. You know, yeah. and that's and, – and you've got that handful of people wherever you're at that will just crush miles. And there yeah. are some that, you know, really crush miles. Um, you know, and I I like to ride. It's one of those things that I think that from, from my, you know, my ignorant perspective of that was basically from um, – I wasn't following the right people that were into that type of thing, yeah. right? So obviously it's there. For us, our scene is so much more smaller. Yeah. So all those types of extremes like stick out like a sore thumb a mm-hmm. lot more than when you got the massive bike scene of SoCal from Ventura all the way down to the border, right? Yeah. Where, you know, even whenever we were talking about earlier when uh, when the Black Flies dudes, you know, Goo and those guys mm-hmm. all – did that massive fucking trip to, yeah. I think, did they go to Key West as well? They went the, all the way down to the tip yeah, of the Keys. And then they went all the way up north. Yeah. And then, right. yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. you know, my And that's, ass. that's you know, there's, like I said, there's a, there are small pockets of people that yeah. crush miles and, and, you know, Roji and Goo and those guys, they're, they're part, part of that, of that yeah. group, you know, in the area that they're in. And they, yeah, they crush miles. Like you don't. If you follow some of their pages, you won't see the, you know, the constant, like, you know, out riding all the time. Mm-hmm. But you look at you look at their odometers, you're like, holy fuck. You yeah. know, it's because, you know, they did 6,000 miles, mm-hmm. you know, in in a couple of weeks going to, yep. going to the East Coast. You know, so it's, it's uh, you know, I like to ride. I ride every day pretty much, mm-hmm. um, you know. And I just I just like to be on my bike. Yeah. Like I said, man, it's just been one of those deals where, you know, for the sake of conversations and to be, you know, maybe ask the questions, it was always – my goal was always to kind of find out more about what was the actual – like living in SoCal, what was it like? You know, what was the go-to? Like what was – was there bike nights that were worth going to? Was it weekend trips up into the mountains or into the desert, uh, camping trips? Yeah. You know, like – I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, we joke, but you guys have everything you need within a 200-mile radius. Right, yeah. So. And that's, you know, and so a lot of the guys will get stuck in, you know, there are some cliche rides yeah. in San Diego. You know, Julian. It's, it's go to Julian, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I, I'll do this often. You know, I'll go up to the, the hideout. I love the hideout. It's, you know, it's an hour rip for me, but it's all Is up it the one that's the like mountains. right off the road and it kind of has a pull-off? Yeah. Yeah, I went there with the uh, Dino Trash dudes last yeah. year. Yeah, it's a great spot. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, Amber's awesome, great host. Um, 
you know, and, and it's an hour rip up there. And it's mm-hmm. all twisties, and I know every inch of those roads. It's like by a the big p- loop kind of thing. If you do from like Temecula area, you can do like a big loop back to Temecula. Yeah, most people, you know, if they live uh, Temecula, they'll come in one direction, and if you're down in San Diego, you'll come another oh, okay. direction. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's you know that's a cliche ride. Um, you know, up north a little bit, it's it's. Uh, uh, like the rock store, Neptune's net, yeah, those yeah. kinds of things. And, and those are easy meme fodder, you know, it's like, okay, here we go. We're going to Neptune's again. I can't you wait know, to be at like, Neptune's in a couple of weeks. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I actually went there. Uh, I rode up to Ventura, uh, to hang out with some people and on the way there, you know, stopped it. Like, Hands down. One of the best Neptunes clam chowders on the West coast. Yeah. In my opinion, it's spicy. Yeah, they got bread bowls too. Yeah, it was good. I had wanted to go there for a long time, and you know, a lot of people in San Diego don't even want to go that far. Yeah. You know, so I was like, I'm not gonna. Well, I can I'm not gonna rip it. up to Neptune's just by myself and just hang out there. You know, in front of Neptune. I wonder myself. if it's like this for you guys because here, we uh, <laughs> it's your yeah. For for us here, we we kind of uh, the ones of us that do a lot of traveling, it's made local riding very. Uh, just boring like yeah. you know we'll do our bike night thing but that's more just to connect with the homies right, but for sure on a saturday when everybody's like, hey what do you guys want to do this beautiful weather we're like fuck like nothing sounds fun yeah. you know i mean how long does it take you to get somewhere that's fun for you to ride to if it's if we're talking about fun roads it depends on how like because we got some decent roads within a very like east texas has some really pretty roads but it's so rural yeah. They're like you, you're pretty much uh, committing to like, okay, we're gonna go out here, and we don't. There's not a place to go to, or yeah. if you will. But how far away? Like, how long does it take? About you? 200 miles in every direction. It's yeah. Fun. See, that's not a fucking chance. Like most, yeah, most people, you know, if it's if it's more than 50 miles, like, you know, yeah, not yeah. going. So. Just trying yeah, to keep so low mileage not, on the bike. That's well, it. Yeah, you don't want to. You know, you don't want to avoid that warranty too. Quickly. I've always said like that. What I wish people here would do more of, and they might. I might not just know about it. Is do like overnight stay weekend rips. Mm-hmm. Like whether or not it's something you can do on a Friday, get off work, go meet the homies a hundred miles away from here, yeah, and then continue on to another spot and then rip all the way home Sunday. I find that to be way more interesting riding yeah then you know just a saturday bar hop situation right. even though I, I will partake in the bar hop situation. yeah the saturday bar hop can be a lot of fun yeah it's just when that's the only thing yeah. you do on your bike that yeah also yeah. like being riding motorcycles you have to think about it with this context sometimes when you're a new rider it doesn't matter where you're riding like you'll ride that motherfucker for no fucking reason right right but after 10 15 20 years like you got to find something new. You know, yeah. You I'm what Jason calls it. I need new. Yeah. You know what I mean? I need something new to do on this bike that makes it in, exciting and fun because right. just. It's not, a, not necessarily about better, but new. It doesn't always have to one up it or con- continually raise the bar. Just give me something new. Sometimes right. it's people. Like new people in your life can make those same boring road, roads more interesting. You yeah. Know so, I mean? for example, the, the ride that I just came off of, mm-hmm. so left. Thursday left San Diego Thursday, um, and there's a a good group of guys that I hang out with a bunch in San Diego. The LFG 1904 guys, mm-hmm. uh, one of their one of their really really close buddies. It's his bachelor party. Oh, okay. Um, well, they're all sober, oh, fuck, so it wasn't nice. uh, it wasn't you know what you would imagine. So we uh, a lot of really cool riding, but uh, um, but yeah. So we went to. Utah, Zion, uh, Bryce Canyon, North Rim of the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. all this guy. And I've done that a half a dozen times. It's like, yeah. you know, and initially when they were like, hey, do you want to go? I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like, I've seen that a bunch. But I'm like, these guys are awesome. Mm-hmm. I like hanging around with them. And uh, and it worked out exactly that way. It was a, a new group of guys that actually hadn't been, most okay. of them hadn't been there. So they were, I posted one meme, you know, about just the ride to uh, the Grand Canyon. Like, they were just, it just smiles everywhere. Yeah. And it was over, like, hey, did you see that deer? It's <laughs> like, you've never fucking seen a deer before? Yeah. But it's like, man, have you, you know, there was a dead deer over there and some birds were eating it. I mean, it was just, they were just 
like that's in kids, yeah. you know, getting out, going somewhere for the first time. And it was like, and I'd ridden those roads a bunch, you know, and it was one of the best trips. Yeah. One of the best trips ever. Because, I know exactly what you mean. Because the people were awesome to Yeah, when you have with. that, when you get to, you know, either usher someone else into those first time experiences and places, it becomes like, I mean, your their happiness, you seeing them, like, be stoked about it, it bleeds off yeah. into your feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It was, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, it was, it felt like one of the best, best trips I've gone on in a long time. You know, so, do, you, do you have one of those buddies that's, like, high maintenance? Uh, you're, like, you, you bring them along and you're, like, this motherfucker, every time, like, he's high maintenance, needs, needs uh, the extra pat on the back and... You probably cut them out by now. Yeah, we we don't have anyone high maintenance on like a hold us up level, but we do do have some some prissy bitches. With yeah, us. yeah, yeah. So it's I'd like, say who it, James or Cody? Which yeah. one? <laughs> Just calling them out. James or Cody? Which one's the more high maintenance one? <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Like I don't get in the middle of this." There's got to be one. Cody prefers the finer things. Uh, but I wouldn't say he's prissy at all because okay. as soon as, as much as he'd prefer a hotel, he'll, he'll sleep in the dirt. He'll sleep in the fucking dirt. Yeah, and yeah. ride his. You know what I mean? So I would say our, our honestly, eight, our now eight, I'm thinking about it, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was about to say we don't have. One. That's probably <laughs> why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was this day old. When I remember. He's <laughs> like, I'm the high maintenance guy. But yeah, there's nothing. It's exhausting, you know. I like, am actually. Like, I am. Dude. It's, you have <laughs> that the bitch. <laughs> I'm the one that's always bitching about shit. Yeah. I am a natural complainer. It's like though. we got to get up. We you know we got to do this. We can't get here. We got to do this. We got like, dude, just fucking relax. Like yeah. we're on our motorcycles. We're not home. Like yeah, you know. I, I guess I get that way. You know, in my defense. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually when I do a trip, like I I uh, I put a lot of pressure to get the most out of it. Yeah. Uh, whether it's content for the brands that I work with yeah. or. Just well, you've got the pressure. Yeah, you've got the yeah. pressure of an actual business. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're you're one of the few guys that have figured out a way to make a living from yeah. something that Riding you love. Whether yeah. that's a good idea or not is, you know, it's, it's up for debate. Yeah, up for debate. So fuck, that's me, man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you've got those pressures, and so. But so the the. The LFG guys, like you were telling me about them earlier, yeah, um, they're all sober, yeah. Um, so what does and that like fucking look like at night when you are trying to kick back? You know what? You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know. Can it. you like drink around or they look? They like, like no, I do, really? but I don't. Yeah, I but I, I, I want to do. No, that. I still do. Like I'll have a couple of beers or yeah. something. Um, you know, but sometimes it's good. You know, it's like yeah. You know, do you keep a koozie on it so it looks like a no? They're yeah, no, they're like they're pretty deep into their. Nice. Sobriety, so it hasn't been been an issue, um, but yeah, they're still they still go pretty hard, mm -hmm. you know. It's just there's no booze or narcotics involved, um, you know. So it's it's pretty impressive, uh, you know, to see how much fun they can still have. Yeah, yeah. In their sobriety, and I think a lot of them talk about it often, like when they first tried to become sober. It's like, you know, what am I going to do? I'm just going to be a square. You know, it's going to be boring. And, um, you know, so um, and that's not the case. So, oh, yeah, we, but, we I mean, we got guys that come around our our uh, world that, that's sober. But we've, we've always just been kind of more um, like stoked that they've they never it never felt awkward with them being around. Because yeah. even for like people that drink, when you have someone sober around. Yeah. You know, not that we're like, hey, man, you need a drink, too, but right. you just feel bad. Like, there's that, like, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. That bad feeling. Yeah, of like, the, fuck, I feel like I'm just doing all this shit in his face. And, yeah, you know, the only he thing might worse be is tempted. a vegan. Yeah. Fuck, fuck Justin. Justin. God damn it. <laughs> there he is. On he, there. he just said hi. <laughs> Would he, yeah. You think, ju does Justin go into the steakhouse with you and just not I eat it? I don't know. Or does no. he, like, hey, I, I'm going to go sit over here. Does he go in the steakhouse with you guys? No, we've no. never we've never, never got to that level. Okay. Um, but I do wonder, like his. I bet he. Where does would. he draw the line? At? I bet he does. He probably goes in there and eats like Brussels sprouts or something. Yeah. But he wants to make sure the salad doesn't touch the meat. I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't. Like, I don't have enough discipline to to eat. I know what I should be eating. Yeah. And what I shouldn't be eating, especially in my more advanced years, and I just like. 
I'm just skinny you know. shaming him. Uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> I just can't do it. Uh, he's there good. He is. Yes, I go in. Thanks, Justin. There you go. That's it. But no, yeah. So you were talking. So those dudes, I, I noticed they have a podcast. I haven't listened to yeah. it yet. How how long have they been doing it? Do you um, know I think they're on episode twenty five, twenty six, nice. something how like m- that. How long do so, they usually do their episodes? Um, they're usually an hour to two hours or so. Okay. I think mine, mine was right at three hours, okay. and that was the longest. You know, it's like I've been watching your stuff so long. I'm like, okay, I can, I can, I can, feel I, can I can talk all goddamn day long. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're podcasts. It's a great mix of, of like recovery stuff. And man, it will just blow your mind. Like these guys, you know, like serious, you know, jail time. And like, it wasn't just like, ah, uh, you know, I probably drink too much. I should probably stop. It's yeah. like destroyed their life, everything around them kind of thing. And, and for them to come back and be in the position that they are now, yeah. it's pretty impressive. Nice. Um, you know, and I think, and, and I didn't even realize when I first started uh, following their brand and that kind of stuff, I didn't even realize that they were sober mm-hmm. at first. It wasn't until they actually started doing the podcast and I realized it. And it really clicked for me. My my older son has had an issue with substance abuse and, mm-hmm. and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's messed him up pretty good. Mm-hmm. And so I'm listening to these stories and it's, I mean, it's hitting me like a ton of bricks because I'm, you know, they're telling the story from the perspective of the person, mm-hmm. the addict. I'm listening to it from the perspective of their parent. Yeah. You know, and the pain, you know, that you feel and the frustration yeah. and like, um, you know, so it, it really, that's when everything really clicked mm-hmm. with me for those guys is like, okay, now it's, you know, almost in a selfish way, I'm listening to those podcasts to figure out what the hell's going through your head. So I'm yeah. like, why, why do you keep doing that? Yeah. Like it's, this isn't rocket science here. Like, you know, you touch the fire, you're going to get burned. It's going to hurt. Why do you keep doing it? Yeah. And so now I'm hearing it from, from the addicts perspective and guys that are, you know, sober for nine, 10, 11 years, mm-hmm. you know, and you can, I can start to understand a little bit better. Whereas before, like I had, I, you know, I mean, I was in the military for 20 years, so it's, it, it was very simple. Like, you know, you do this, you do it now. And you know, this is the way it goes. Yeah. You know, you try to be a good leader and be personable and stuff, but it, sometimes it's just like, you know, fucker, this is what you do. Fuck around, find out, yeah. do what I'm telling you to do, or, you know, there's consequences, you know, and you try to do that one with your kid period that's not going to work out too well but you know a, a, a child with substance abuse issues mm-hmm. you know that's not going to go over well and so I've, I've tried to I've tried to take on some of the things that I've learned from them like trying to understand have a little bit of empathy mm-hmm. it's still hard though you know, yeah, I, still I, get, I still get pissed off pretty easily yeah, I couldn't imagine like going through that. My my family, my my mom's generation, her brothers, they all struggle with drugs. So I got to see it from being a child to see people have things and lose it. Yeah. To where it always scared me away from anything. Yeah. Um even drinking like I've said it many times on the podcast. I didn't drink till I was almost 30. Yeah. Um fuck, the first time I ever tried smoking weed was when I met my wife. I was trying to get laid. <laughs> and uh, nah, she was she was a she smokes and she does yeah. it for, you know, her reasons and I was like fuck it you know I can't you know I've seen enough people that smoke weed that didn't lose their life right but mainly growing up it was coke and crack that yeah. was plaguing people in my right. surroundings but yeah um yeah I don't know that's a weird one I mean those Smirnoffs do taste pretty good <sighs> dude those I thought 40 they ounce digging. yeah those 40 ounces Smirnoff yeah, sometimes man badass Sometimes you gotta just let them know. That's it. Just put it, keep it in the brown bag, so everybody thinks you're doing something a little harder. Right. Exactly. You know, just, but you're just off in the corner getting iced. <laughs> Did I suck? To, uh, dude, I was always like so, like I in the work in the shops that I worked in growing up. I was never around drinking. Yeah. Like the the main shop here in Dallas that I worked out of, that dude didn't drink, smoke, really, didn't do anything. Wow. And so he rarely had, there was never alcohol around. There was no, nothing about drinking that was like, oh, shit, that looks like fun. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like that's it what It was we just do. a work ethic. Yeah. Right. We, we, we constantly worked. And that was kind of like how I, I was able to kind of grow pretty quickly 
I mean, it doesn't feel quickly now looking back almost 20 years, but able to make such a stride at a young age right. at the time in the motorcycle industry was because I didn't do anything but grind. Right. Right. Yeah. And then once I started seeing some success, that's whenever I kind of got to that point where I'm in different circles around different people. I'm right. not having to do, you know, 20 hours, you know, overtime every week to paint bikes and things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, alcohol became a little bit more palatable. Right. Um, Mainly, they, like, I still can't smoke weed to save my life. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. I, when I was, I have two uncles that are a year and a half and two and a half years older than uh -huh. me. And so they were, like, older brothers. Oh, yeah. And so, like, they got me into a lot of shit uh -huh. pretty young. So, like, you know, elementary school age, you know. Hey, try this. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I was smoking weed with them and doing crystal meth, lines oh, of crystal meth, you know, sixth grade seventh grade um well, people like your age are just built different <laughs> i don't know i you know what it's it's a weird thing i don't i don't have an addictive personality like i i can step back and like okay this is i'm going overboard yeah so i need to yeah you know i need to tone it back and i guess you know with true addicts they don't have that ability to pull back it's just like more 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 see i more. won't try things like i always tell people you know you know, Coke kind of comes up in the circles here and there, mm -hmm. and it looks fun. Look like fun, man. I ain't gonna lie, but little, I little Colombian marching powder. <laughs> there you go. I also know that uh, allegedly, I can afford a very minor Coke habit, and I don't, you know, want to go down that path. No. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't yeah. even afford to drink when I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's powdered donuts, man. <laughs> they were powdered donuts when um. And I always think about that, and I, and I try to, like, judge what I try and do yeah. based on the fact, okay, if I like this, I got to be prepared for the, the aspect that I'm going to want to do more of it. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, the only thing I've found drug-wise that I like is mushrooms, and that's I've never, kind of... I never tried, which, surprisingly, my uncle never... That was one thing that we, like, we tried. I mean, at that time, I, I mean, it was what? Let's see. 1979 maybe mm -hmm. 80 um you know there wasn't a whole lot out there um you know so it was just weed and this is like 1978 kind of weed like okay. barely done anything. yeah so like i remember when i was when i was a kid we'd get that and like i'd splurge and get a nickel and i'm like oh fuck yeah i'm gonna you know and i could smoke that whole thing and you know we would Function. just sit in the garage on a couch and laugh you know, and function, and you then an awesome and then and dude. then go home, and you know, like no big deal. You know, funny thing is, for as long as I can remember, um, I always had red eyes. Mm -hmm. So it turned out we didn't figure out till much until I was, I think, like in high school or something, that I had some sort of like almost permanent eye infection thing. Mm -hmm. So my eyes were always red, <laughs> and it. You know, so just threw people out. They thought you were blissed out of your mind. Well, no, and then when I was, <laughs> mom and grandma had no idea. <laughs> you know, because Juan's eyes did were always we, red. Did we back in the day have like that really, really like smell that it does nowadays? No, because I feel like nowadays we just smells like dude. dude I could so smells good. So I like in the last couple of years before I retired. I used to joke, like, the day I retire, I'm going to roll the biggest, fattest fucking doom, and I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get high as fuck. And, uh, Sounds like and a I, cough when he says that. Right? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I didn't, after retirement, like, I don't know, I was busy. I didn't do, so probably like six, eight months later, I finally did, and I got something. And, dude, I tried that, and it was, I was so fucking high, and it was... I didn't realize that there were different strains and stuff. And I think I had the one that's the up, not the down. And so my whole head was like, boom, boom. You know, it was just. What, what, are you, what have y'all done to weed? Right. Like, what the <laughs> hell did you guys do in the last 30 years? And so I guess it's, you know, quite different. And yeah. so after that, like, I tried it once or twice more. I was like, no, this, this shit sucks. Like, it, I don't like it. Yeah, at all. Yeah. I don't like it at all. I man, I, I see all my friends smoking it, and they're, uh, <laughs> and if they were jumping off a cliff, I'd try it. Too, <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah. But they they just they got so much. Uh, I guess what's the word I'm looking for? Or they're they're accustomed to it, or 
tolerance tolerance yeah. to it that like when i tried even just one hit i'm just like yeah you know and i can't and i'm i guess i'm a control freak as it is yeah. and so i feel like i lose an i don't i don't ret retain enough control over certain aspects of my mind or my bodily yeah. functions mm -hmm. as opposed to when i'm drinking yeah. i still like, i have I six do. of these yeah. and i know exactly what's gonna happen yeah i guess i'm, I'm tolerant to that so right. i guess that's the thing you know but you know you you smoke some weed and i have no idea yeah how it's gonna affect me you know do something i have no idea so you know i can have a six pack of coors light at Josie's and rip home, no problem. Yeah, you know, but you throw something else in the mix, like that's it's when, over. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. That's when well, the bad choices get the made. mushroom thing for us too. Like my wife does it as a she does a lot of microdosing to kind of help with uh, anxiety and all that type yeah. of shit. I've and heard a lot about that. It for her it helps out a lot. Yeah. And uh, and every once in a while, like I need it too. But what's a microdose though? I don't even it's know. It's like that. it's not really enough to alter any like. You're not. It's more like a. You buy it measured in a microdose, uh, or do you? Well, you buy it from a guy on a street corner. No, come on. Yeah, and then you just take you. You can you can kind of like, what she does or wants to do is that you can kind of like get it like, ground up pretty good and put them in like pills, like yeah. a capsule. Yeah, and it's like we're talking like point oh three, you know what is it? What, yeah, grams or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah. It's a, it's a very small amount. Yeah. And uh, you take it, and it just kind of uh, I've heard a lot about it alleviates, I've, and yeah, they use it I've for heard, PTSD and yeah, stuff like that. I've quite heard a, bit. a lot about it. Um, we did the 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 Christmas special here where we thought we were micro dose, <laughs> <laughs> and it, they weren't they weren't nah. micro enough. <laughs> no, nah, because we, we we tried to keep our sunglasses on because it was one of those things where like if you make eye contact, you immediately bust out laughing. So wearing the sunglasses in the podcast while we were all on mushrooms was a way to help us cope with keep it together yeah i still lost it a little bit yeah. but i mean it's fun i mean mushrooms is a is a it's a to me it's like a drug that can help you find yourself yeah it can help you cope with some things or you can just have it a can, great time or you can have a really bad trip so yeah. earlier we were talking about campouts and yeah. you mentioned the kernville uh -huh. camp out do, do you follow that at all a when little it's bit going is that on? the one where you gotta get a ticket to go to yeah we're in yeah like of, you buy a uh a wristband or something. You, Bill will put that on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's built well, and then Steve at Speed Kings is yeah, yeah. is heavily involved. It's they a, sell out, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great event. I, I love it. Last year was a good time. I like that but, area. Yeah, that Kern is yeah. yeah. Kern is is a phenomenal place to go, and it's you know I mean it's far enough away to where you know people that don't normally get out of city limits they feel like it's a, it's a trip like it's a fucking destination like we went to kernville like this is rad but last year at kernville um some of my friends there uh one of them tried some tried some mushrooms and it went it went south yeah so i don't you, you probably weren't following it but there was lots of uh posts about marley there so <laughs> this chick she she had too much whatever it was i don't know what exactly it was that she was having but just bad trip running around the camp screaming marley talking about marley it was her daughter marley mm -hmm. so like the the whole camp like she kept everybody up at the camp like almost all night long yeah and so that was the running joke for a while afterwards is <laughs> you know oh did you go to kernville yeah marley everybody gets it but that's a that's a good yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean that that happens depending on uh, they say like what it is is basically you, when you do mushrooms like an actual amount you got to get deal with some personal shit on the inside and that's kind of like what it's for you know. <laughs> See, he was there, Marley. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like a you know my my wife was tripping uh, pretty hard at the camp out and. The energy got a little bit dark at one point for her, and so yeah. you know she had to kind of go to a a comfortable spot. I mean, yeah. you can, but that's just. But if you so if you have the self awareness and yeah. you've you've experiment whatever enough to know when you're getting there, I think you know if it goes bad for people that are trying it for the first time, like you don't know. The first time I ever tried it, I got I, I did a a pretty big amount, and I did it for artistic purposes. I wanted to kind of like. I started, you know, back in like 2008, 9, and 10, like I was really into fine art, like mm -hmm. creating art and shit. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? 
at this time, I didn't have like my own style. Yeah. Right. And, you know, at the time I never would have thought it would have been the way I paint helmets or right. bikes now yeah. that it's become my style. But at the time I was just, man, I just want to be an, a, a, an artist. I want to have my own thing. Mm -hmm. And I felt like doing mushrooms would help me kind of look inside for some type of uh, premonition or some right. shit like yeah. that to figure that out. Yeah. And, uh, all I remember from that night was <laughs> I had some of the most gnarly kill streaks on call of duty I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and nice. Battlefield Los Angeles just came out on DVD and we had got it and we watched it that night and it was fucking intense. Yeah. And I, I'm really good with directions and there was this chick coming over the house. It was a bunch of us there and I'm like trying to tell her the phone and I'm like laughing to my friend. I was like, dude, I don't know how to get, get here. here. <laughs> and it was just like this and weird you thing. drop a pen. Like that didn't yeah, yeah. exist. Then. It wasn't. <laughs> like, and then I did have, I was listening to Modest Mouse. Yeah. And at the time I was really into the whole band. A lot I still am today, but there's this one song. It's not even a it's not even a sad song, but the beat on mushrooms got low. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck. This is so irresponsible. I'm doing it because I never done any drugs. It's the first drug okay. I've ever done. Oof. And I was like, I'm supposed to get my son tomorrow. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Jace? Yeah. So I went in my room and laid in bed and I'm just thinking to myself, like, God damn it, what's and then my friend came in the room who was the one doing drugs with me. We had two people doing drugs and other two people watching us because it was funny. Right, yeah. and uh, Real funny, thanks. Yeah. They still bring it up here and there. Yeah. And so when he came in the room, it immediately changed my whole – it okay. took me out of that dark spot, and that, I never hit it again. Yeah. But you know what happens, man? You just – I wouldn't do mushrooms alone for the first time. Yeah. I would do it with somebody else, and I would probably just do it, like, ease your way into it. So did it work? Fuck yeah. Well, I think that one didn't, but the next time I did, it was a lot more, I don't know. I don't really think any of it worked, to be honest with you, because. So when did you, when did you figure out that your style now, like, fuck, that's it. That's, that's uh, me. Time. It takes time to No, create. when, though? When did you figure it out, like. Can you can you look back at yeah at I, a I bike don't, or something? I don't look remember at I don't remember like an exact date, but when I realized it was only like a couple of years ago, and oh shit, like this thing I've been doing, that's kind of an influence of a lot of other painters I like that I kind of bring into me and mold it with my own style right. or yeah. my own uh, toolbox, and mm -hmm. then I spit out my style. Yeah, and then I realized that is what ninety percent or almost all artists over time have always been Absolutely. is an uh, accumulation of other artistic um references or inspirations yeah. that kind of help shape each other right. and um you know one of my favorite artists is alex gray he's the one that used to do all the tool uh artwork okay. for yeah. the band mm -hmm. and i've read a lot of his books and things like that and his work was just so far out there but the dude also used to draw anatomy books okay so his whole psychedelic art and visionary art is is anatomy based with like a like this wild, I don't know if I have the book here. Yep, got it right here. So, you know, shit like that, yeah. you know, where you have, hold on. Oh, yeah. don't look at that. Well, yeah, well. So one of my favorite paintings of all time, not that one, is, uh, where is it? This one. Oh, I'm going to tear this book up. Like, yeah, this is like a trip, like a uh, that's like a, a a DMT trip right there. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I've always been a fan of that work. And yeah, and your stuff has like well, very angular. I wouldn't say that he's been an influence of my work now, but he was an influence. Well, that's one of your favorites. I see. Yeah, I can see that in you know a lot of your stuff. I mean, there's yeah sharp angles and stuff. So maybe I you don't think I, I would have said yeah. I mean, I guess you could say it was there, but I would have always thought that the sharp angles came from my days in a lowrider culture and doing a lowrider paint jobs. Okay, uh, because well, like I said, there's just there's so much out there. Um, obviously, airbrush artists like it, it's all kind of relatively the same from different artists. Yeah, you're always just trying to achieve a certain level of realism. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really – it's hard to have your own style there because you're literally just doing a technique, not yeah. necessarily creating uh, – I don't know. Honestly, painting skulls was more artistic than painting someone's face, Yeah, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, that uh, Because the skulls had artistic freedom to kind of make it look how you want. Someone's face had to look like their face. Right. So you're pretty much 
you know, just doing what you have to do. But yeah. so when you do stuff now, do you do you consciously say, "All right, Jace, this is my style. This is it needs to be in this," or mm-hmm. or or when you lay something out, does it just does it just come out? Well, I usually try to get whoever I'm doing the work for to give me some of the things that they like that I've done. Mm-hmm. And then I take those three or four or five paint jobs um, and I try to bring those elements together as if they were all four different artists coming together okay. and then create something new out of that. Sometimes I, I, I get too busy with stuff and I feel like I need to step back to simplicity Yeah, because simplicity, in my opinion, is the most classy of paint jobs. Absolutely. Um, busyness is usually used to hide imperfections in paint yeah. jobs. And so I feel like uh, when I can find that perfect balance, which I still have a hard time doing it because when I see empty space, I feel like there should be something there. there. And that's a hard balance to kind of walk away from. I mean, I can barely write my own name, but I mean, I've read the worst handwriting. I've read a lot that artists, you know, struggle with that. Like, okay, when is it, when is it done? Yeah. And then, and then if it's too much, then it's kind of wrecked the whole thing. So being, yep. so do you feel like when, when you figured out how to figure out when something's done, like, do you remember when you figured out like, okay, I'm done. This is, uh, this is good. Honestly, I feel like the painting aspect of things is like, there is no such thing as, you know, level 50. Like it, you just, there. it's just constant growth. And, and the thing about the paint industry is that it's constantly kind of evolving as to what is popular, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and right now, you know, panels have kind of, they're still there. They're still very popular. Yeah. But most people kind of, they really want that, but they don't want to be made a meme yeah. about, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because it's such a it's such a cliche thing to do to your Dinah yeah. or even your performance bagger now. Mm-hmm. But you know, with the styles, they kind of are evolving right now. And I feel like we're all kind of evolving from your traditional panel paint into something more racy that fits the new trend or the, the, the the continuation of the performance trend that's going on. If you will. I I don't know if it's a thing out here. I saw like yours, you know, I see the, I don't know know the technical, like the scale. Is that the technical term? Like that's a, that's a fairly common thing that I see. And SoCal, a bunch. Something else that I've started to see a bunch is lace kind that's, of yeah, stuff. I stopped doing that a couple years ago. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, lace is, uh, it's very common. It's very, I mean, there's some on that helmet there. Uh, that helmet was me practicing trying to learn how to do panel paint because I never really did it growing up. It was always, if you need some tribal affliction shit, bro, I got you. You got that it. That shit right there. I was getting paid out the ass through that shit back in the day. <laughs> That's right. So, hey, man, I don't know. I want to do something different. I'm thinking When I mentioned the affliction jeans earlier today, you got kind of quiet. Yeah, well, was I was that, a, you know, I never could afford affliction. Okay, yeah. I, was, I noted that. Like, I mentioned the affliction, and then it just got kind of silent. I'm like, ooh, maybe maybe, maybe Jace liked the affliction jeans. All right, I need to back off. I was off like, hold there. up. Like, this dude ain't staying at my house tonight. You're going to hit on my battle sheet. And that, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Motherfucker trying to sink me over here. Direct hit. Yeah. We fuck with Big Will Cody about it because he does have those jeans. Really? We think so. Does. does Big Will Cody still have a big wheel? Yeah. He brought oh. it to the camp out. No shit. He parked it in the oh, middle of the road the one. and it never moved for three fucking days. Yeah. And uh, until he left. Yeah. And uh, that was good seeing that bike there because that's what he rode to the camp out with originally, right. you know? Um, fucking send If you're going to ride it, I don't give a shit. He, dude, if he you're going to put it in a trailer. Yeah. To take it somewhere, I don't. That's exactly, I don't want to see yeah, it. Like yeah. I don't. That is the one thing that that does worry me about the 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 growth of performance baggers. Yeah, is especially now when you have a lot of big wheel bagger shops that are kind of finally transitioning, if you will, yeah, into this type of bike. Yeah, is that I get it if you're a shop and you're going to Daytona and you're setting up a booth, right? But I still think I still think if you can afford to go set up a booth in Daytona then you can afford to go ride your bike and have one of your guys drive the truck and trailer. Yeah. And you can create some kind of connection to riding yeah. these bikes. And yeah. to me, uh, I mean, do big wheels, like do you guys that have big wheels, do they typically ride those things or is it, uh, or yeah, is it, it's, it's, I mean, 50, do people 50. crush miles? 50, 50. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think it's, especially now it's not going to be as popular to see because of it being, kind of a dated style of bike building mm-hmm. right now and it's not cheap is it 
Uh, I mean, they're cheaper now. I yeah, mean, performance yeah. bagger costs way more. Yeah. You know? Uh, but, I mean, I know that when I was doing it, we rode quite a bit. We 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 rode the same trip that I do to San Francisco. We did that three times on big wheels. Okay. Um <laughs> <Thirty years later>. <laughs> <laughs> that's it exactly that was a real bike that was yeah that was at uh, arizona bike week out in front of uh cave creek uh uh what's that the, so the hide, th- hide this, out, hideaway i'm hideaway. gonna try to explain this this concept right now so a lot of a lot of arizona bike week there's a lot of money in the motorcycle customization out there yeah. a lot of big For shops sure. yeah and a lot of those big shops have really really rich customers and those rich customers kind of keep some of those shops afloat absolutely now where it becomes complicated is it's a a a big wheel bagger shop doesn't truly understand the performance bagger scene so they don't understand how to make an expensive bike right right so they start doing all the same shit they would normally do to a big wheel bagger to a performance bagger yeah and it's because also they haven't been around it long enough to get the eye for what this needs to look like and right. the vibe of this bike. Yeah. And so that's why you see a lot more dudes doing some kind of out there shit that just, it's like when I think they talked about it before on Rogan about when someone does like a certain type of plastic surgery to their face, it just does something's off. Right. Here. That's what it's it too much. seems yeah. like with some of the big wheel bagger shops getting the performance baggers. Yeah. And I'm not trying to talk shit. This is just criticism. Yeah. Right. Over time, that they en- engulf and become a part of this uh, community, if you will, they will find their place and they will find a way to showcase their vision of building bikes within this right. parameters of this world. How many of those guys do you think will be able to make it and transition and not go out of business, or or just say, you know what, I'm going to take what I got? And you know what I honestly I'm think gonna go is going to happen, and it already kind of has is they're going to do their own version of what performance baggers are. Okay. So they're going to do a lot of the things to their bikes that we already do, but it'll be fat front tires. Uh, it'll be, you know, still be the big stereos. It'll be all that shit that... that so can they call that a performance bagger? I'm past <laughs> being the ambassador of who's allowed to say that word. <laughs> yeah. You know, but um, no. I mean, it, what, I mean, what's your definition then? What... The definition has been changed. I mean, at first, when this was a very, it was a, a more rare bike across country. Honestly, if you saw a, ba- a bagger with T bars on it, it kind of like, oh shit! Like he, we probably follow the same people. Like we're right. in the same kind of community, right? Yeah. Now it's definitely. I was talking to somebody <laughs> recently. I can't remember who, but there was a point in time where if you rode T bars on your bagger in Dallas, you definitely knew who I was. Yeah. Right. And I'm not trying to sound arrogant, right. but you just definitely did. And now. There's tons of people in Dallas that ride T-bars have never fucking heard of our brand. Yeah. You know, so to me, that's just like a, a, a like it's grown past like whatever um, influence or whatever the fuck our brands had on, especially this community here in Dallas. Right. So. But if you had to sum up a performance bagger and just a few things, like. I, I think the down. holy what do you trinity think? of performance baggers are suspension, brakes, and motor. Okay. Uh I mean, I'd like to. Can you add to? Yeah, you can add to. But no, I'm saying in that, like, can you add? Can you, can you add to the bike, make it heavier, mm-hmm. and still consider it a performance well, bike? If you're in your suspension, and you know, but you I add other you, bolt-on things. Can, I think it's kind of hard to do. To I mean. I don't know who we, I, we for a while we were saying performance touring. I love that way more yeah. because in performance touring, the concept is that you have, you know, motor suspension, you know, brakes, uh, you know, you have the aesthetic of what performance baggers have always looked like, mm-hmm. but you're not necessarily doing it because you're trying to drag the floorboards or whatnot. Right. You're doing it because you, you want that purpose built if you will style yeah. bike that can do everything right right yeah. i can travel across country yeah and when we get to pch i can enjoy pch to the best of my ability right which let's be honest like most of us can't ride past yeah yeah the stock ability of the bike yeah you know? i'm not steve chamberlain i'm not fucking yeah. coming in third at the <laughs> <laughs> bagger racing league yeah you know that's not gonna happen yeah i've I, you know i've had a lot of people 
you know, because I'll get on a, a performance bag or kick for a little while, and then I'll have people like, well, what's your definition of it? And stuff. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. I'm not the guy yeah. to, to define it. But if I look at something, I'm like, you know, no, I don't think that's performance. I can't tell you why, you know. It's like, no, I don't think that's performance. It, um, you know, I mean, putting T-bars, floorboards, and a seat on a bagger doesn't make it Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't make it across the board like you're in the club, but – it's, it's a good the, start. It's in the direction of yeah. it. It's just the same way, like I said, I, I used a, a Cholo soft tail, mm-hmm. right? There's a level of that shit where you're like, yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, you go to some of the low rider shows, yeah. the super show, things yeah, like that. Was, you're seeing was, was amazing up. bikes. And even like uh, our good buddy Marcus used to hang out with us, or he hangs out with us. He used to have one. His bike was clean, man. He had all the right shit. But, I mean... Some dude wants to build a, a, a cholo style soft tail. He might start with just the fish tails, absolutely, and then he might be saving up for those longer stretch yeah. rear fender and front fenders. Yeah. Then maybe he's going for the fucking beach bars or yeah. the Carlinis or so. There's like always. I don't want to. I never want to, like, make someone who's working towards that goal feel like they're not accepted. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. But also, like, if you're on Facebook and you're talking about. Hey, man, so check out my performance bagger. It's like, first off, don't go on Facebook anymore. Like, that's that's a horrible place to communicate with Who people. Who goes on Facebook anymore? Uh, I don't know. Apparently, our way. buddy Craig thinks he's a Who fucking influencer that? now. Like, <laughs> my mom hangs out on Facebook. Yeah. All my uncles and aunts are on Facebook. And, you know. Dudes no. are posting their FL8 yeah. shovel head from a long time ago. They put a cam in. He's right. like, dude, yeah. I'm in, right? Yeah. I actually, I, I do Facebook. So very different personality yeah one on facebook is very different than one on instagram my facebook is real estate related oh, yeah. military stuff because that's honestly that's where a lot of my yeah. a lot of my business comes from that so i it's there is a very distinct yeah line, line. you know so like people will tag me and stuff on facebook no nope. hide hide yeah. the motorcycle related hide nope that's I, not I that's don't. not going on there because that's not you know that's not the the persona that i'm putting out for that they all know but i don't want it to be front and center yeah you know some of these memes you know are not (laughs) if you if you were to put them on like the performance bagger page i put some i put some of them on there's like a dyna i forget which one dyna something or other page and i'll put some on there every now and then but you know i mean that dyna page is filled with fucking hell yeah brothers that are still Posting pictures of their 16-inch yeah. apes on their wide glide. You know, it's like, that's not, you know. So they're like, what's wrong with it's this? It's a Dyna. Right. Yeah. It's like, I don't eh. know why everybody hates wide glides, by the way. I have no idea. Uh, yeah. They're not the most desirable if you want to build, like, a performance or a club-style Dyna. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. I, I've never got that. figured out. I'm with you. I love them, too. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I, I I mean, the first first Harley that I got was they my 17 low red. as well. Is it? I don't know about the newer ones, but the older ones had a had a much more a different rake on the front end that made yeah. it. I don't know; it might have been the same as the low rider, but I want to say it was further. I think it's probably further out. Yeah, and it just yeah. it just wasn't ideal for carbon canyons, things like yeah. that. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. that makes a lot of so sense. So even a low rider has a further rake than a super glide. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the super glide T Sport DX has always had like the most desirable yeah. uh, wheelbase, if okay. you will. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It's one of those things, but I don't think people, a lot of people that are blasting them on these Facebook, and it's only on Facebook pages, like nobody cares about it elsewhere. But like as soon as somebody posts a picture of a wide glide, I mean, you can just count on it like three, two, one, you know, the comments yeah. fill up like, like dude, well, whatever. Th- like, this is the other thing that, that this is a good segue into this. To understand everything, you got to understand how tribal people are, right? A lot of people buy a bike, and it's easier to be accepted in a community now because of social media. Right. You can become a part of this great community just because you have a conversation with people on a Facebook forum, right? Yeah. And so, you know, when that one guy comes in, it's easier to kind of all gang on him and clown him. Yeah. It makes it harder for people to get into the, yeah. you know, to get into the club, if you will. Yeah. But it's tribal, man. Everybody yeah, has their own version of what this is supposed to do. Which is ridiculous. So one of the kids that I was telling you about – some of the guys that I ride with, and the one that I mentioned that I could, I'm old enough to be his dad, I think. Yeah. So when he first started riding with some of us, um, he has a Yamaha Bolt. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
And when he first yeah, yeah. fucking bolt gang. So when he first showed up, you know, I mean, I was, he's a great kid. Love him to death. Austin. Um, you know, I remember one time we were at, uh, um, in Barrio Logan at the Cesar Chavez Park there. And we had, I don't know, it's like four Dinas or something like that lined up. And then his, his Yamaha was on the side. I'm like, Austin, you got to move this fucking thing. You're going to fuck up the pictures. Like, yeah. you got to move it. And so, you know, I got a video of him, you know, moving the bike away. And, uh, but, you know, that kid has ripped more miles with me yeah. than all the other dudes with Dinas. Like, you know, so just fucking get out and ride. Like, I you don't know those cats. They I don't, I'm going to make, out, we're I'm going to make fun of the bolt, but. Was if you're riding it, fuck, I don't give a shit. Just come out it's and ride. Great, it's a great first bike. Yeah. For me, yeah. get into it where you don't really have Harley brand loyalty. I didn't. I yeah. came off dirt bike, so I was, I was already loyal to Yamaha. Yeah. And, man, just pound for pound up against the Sportster. I yeah. Mean, it I mean, that 900, kid, 900 range, Austin has crushed, I don't know, probably 10, 12,000 miles with me and has never once had an issue. Like, he'll, he'll – run into shit when he's a little sauce but like the bike is never <laughs> he, he's he's had to change his bars a few times and gone through a few crash bars but you know i mean the bike has run like a champ and i don't know probably three months ago now he finally gave in went and bought a uh the 2022 low rider s this is what happens called. like I, I i've we've always tried to keep our scene this way where you know Everybody's welcome to come because really what's going to happen is if you are cool as shit, that's more important to us than anything. Right. If if you're cool as shit, then eventually you're probably going to want to go down the path and get a bike similar to the way we have our setup. Right. Um, and that's happened time and time again. James was on a V-Rider when he first came to bike night. Yeah. Cody was on a Big Wheel Bagger the first time he came to the camp out. Yeah. So a lot of people have kind of funneled into the style of bikes that we're on right. based on yeah. like you know these are my guys i want to fuck with them mm -hmm. i can do this now yeah so they're gonna do it yeah um honestly man i i think all bikes are pretty cool yeah but unfortunately it doesn't mean that they're not funny i don't know about v rods though <laughs> i don't there's some dude, dude like, in europe right there? now that say he's got a v rod on his wall with a 400 back tire yeah and it says hardcore on the gas tank he saw it on pinterest Fuck yeah. and he's like saving up his money to have this yeah. finally i don't know about that like i can appreciate a big wheel bagger you know for the the money that it took to get there and the work behind it yeah you know fucking v-rod it's you know those guys get those stock and they're like that's the fucking best thing ever yeah i'm like no man that thing yeah the v-rod community ugly. is like I mean, if they they could get it, honestly, I don't know why these meme pages are fucking skipping over that community. There's a, yeah. there's a, I mean, there, it's not a big community. That's why the sports community is way bigger, right? Yeah. Uh, but they are they are the ones. Sports sports is low hanging fruit because everybody's got to start somewhere. V Rod, you chose that, so I guarantee they're, you, there's yeah. Dyna dudes they're out there. Game. I guarantee you, there's a there's a young enough generation of dudes on Dynas who have no fucking clue what a V Rod is. Could be. You yeah. know what I mean? They're like the Miata yeah. of motorcycles. Like it's yeah. not a big the, group that loves them, but they're fierce as fuck. Like they, uh, the ones that are about them are about fierce. Them. Like two years ago, <laughs> two years ago, there was a guy that would kind of tag along on some rod, some rides. He had a V rod, and uh, just like if you think of a guy that rides it, so he was like a, a physical trainer guy. So just you know. Big oh yeah, big dude. muscle dude. Yeah, it's exactly what I imagined. And he wore like this, like helmet thing with the skull mask that comes down. Fuck like yeah. I mean, it's just to be like expected. You know, had some affliction genes going. Um, you know, it was like, and he would like fifteen minutes behind on the corners. Yeah, on the freeway though, man, he'd be like, Rah! like look at me, Rah! like okay, that's cool. <laughs> Jesus, man. So he just kind of stopped they coming exist, around. Dude. Yeah. They exist. But I don't understand those bikes at all. Well, what if those bikes come back and become the next popular thing? I'll get one then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just a fucking sheep writing some memes. Like, I don't give a shit. I got a Dyna because, you know. Let me log in Instagram and see doing. what I'm doing today. Right? Exactly. <laughs> what, you know. I don't know. I don't like those things at all. I could I've probably one. reach the ground, though, pretty good yeah. on one of those. One of the times I went to NorCal and I stayed up there for like a month painting bikes, 
uh, my friend that I was staying at his house, he had a V rod and and uh, my wife was with me and so she went back to SoCal. Did you ride that thing? I'm getting to that. Yeah. So she went back to SoCal to see her, her family. So she took the car down there. So I was left with a V rod, <laughs> and I was going from Mountain House, California, to Stockton. So right through Tracy and up through a uh, like uh, fucking Manteca and all that shit, and it was like a 30 mile ride, right? And mm-hmm. it was the most miserable thing in the world because yeah. the riding position was like this, like yeah. feet up in the air, like this down the highway yeah but and it's it's fast i mean it's yeah, fast but, but you have no like you feel like you're just on there hanging on and that's how the new sportster feels like too really yeah the, not the new it does kind of look like a not the new nightster but the sportster s i yeah. rode one of those and same feeling yeah it looks fast like, as fuck it looks like a v-rod it, it passed for me as a v-rod yeah same feeling when i rode it yeah um but yeah that's one of those things that's what you know I guess the concept is like, yeah, it feels like you're tough as fuck, but when you want to ride a bike with any kind of uh, aggression or Mm -hmm. skill, if you will. Or make a right turn. Yeah. (laughs) If you want to lean. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that doesn't Um, seem like the right bike. You know, you want your feet to be a little bit further under you. You don't want to be reaching down towards your, like you're touching your toes for the most part. So Yeah. I couldn't do forward controls like um, I can barely, I can barely reach the controls on what I have now. So yeah. like forward controls, no way. I've got one of my buddies. He's like six foot three or something. He has a like a fifteen street bob. Uh-huh. He actually put forward controls on it so that he wasn't all yeah. crammed up, you know. And he rips the fuck out of that thing. But fuck, I think Mark T Bar Jesus. I think he's like six four or six five, and he's like huge. And I mean. He was the first dude I knew that was running around, not first, but he was one of the first guys I've ever saw in Texas, uh, ripping like a bagger with mid controls. They were all mm-hmm. hand done because he used to do. He used to work out there in Phoenix and shit. Yeah, and uh, I mean, same thing when he rides an FXR with mid controls. Like, it's almost like his knees are his his like armrests. Arm yeah. You know what I mean? But he's he's one of the best riders I know. Yeah. I. I it sucks that he didn't. He couldn't figure out how to get himself on a track, you know, with being a single dad and everything like yeah, that. But okay. motherfucker can ride, dude. And it's expensive. Yeah, I couldn't imagine how much it costs to to build something that can compete on a track. Fortunately, he has a shop, a bike shop, building bikes, so he he does well on that. But okay, you know, just being a single dad thing with a, yeah. a young child. Yeah, you that's know what not I mean? easy. No, I told him to stay easy. away from those fucking strippers, man. Right? <laughs> fucking every time. Every time. It's guaranteed. But but they love me. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> so does the Hooters waitress. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. So what was, uh, like I said, you started doing all these memes. Yeah. And you've only been doing it for like half this year, right? Yeah, just like since January. Yeah. It was just kind of a random thing, too. It wasn't like I decided like, okay, this is how I'm going to, you know, do something Yeah, on Instagram. It just kind of happened. Uh-huh. And like I said, it would make me laugh. And then people started liking them. I'm like, oh, this is this is good. I really wonder, like, the, you know, because a lot of brands, a lot, I mean, we don't have to name names, but some of them, I've noticed it, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've I've kind of been, and I still am, uh, I feel like it's an easy way to get followers, mm-hmm. right? But that's just kind of me hating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Straight up. Yeah. Because you're still making some type of content you're putting out there, people enjoy it. It's Great something, time. I don't know, yeah. what I don't know, you know, I think it's a mix between, you know, reels yeah. that I do from actually writing and the, like I, I have way higher engagement on my reels uh-huh. than I do on the memes. But that's awesome because so. they're trying to push all the reels right now too. It could. Yeah. Yeah. Cause dude, I, I think I was telling you like they, they throttle back photos yeah. so bad. So it's like, I post a picture now it barely hits a thousand mm-hmm. likes, right. which it sucks to even talk about this. Like, Oh, right. Oh. But you're a business. Like, yeah, this yeah. is, yeah, yeah. you're a business. Like I, you know, this I, I mentioned that I do everything I do on Facebook is, you know, for my real estate business. That's kind of the angle. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I get it. Like, if this, this is your business. You want to get the engagement that you need. So, I guess I guess I didn't like meme pages. Well, I follow some. We talked about them earlier. We were talking about, like, some of the other big account meme ones that are mm-hmm. funny. I guess I didn't. It wasn't I didn't like it. I guess I just was more, like I said, a hating, hater. 
Haterade. <laughs> I was drinking the shit heavy. Yeah, you're like, uh, it's like, man, like motherfucker, I work. Look how hard I have to work to get these followers. And this fucker, it's like you're you know? like the big butt model that just comes along and says some funny shit. That's it. It's like, oh, okay, fuck my fuck my twenty years to right. get here. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I come in. Show but now, some memes. now I think I hate TikTokers more than I hated meme guys. So here's here's something that I really struggle with. Okay, is why why take your TikTok and repost it on Instagram? Like that to me is a sign of ultimate laziness. Like if yeah. you're gonna be on TikTok, do TikTok. Yeah. If you're gonna be on Instagram, do Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, I, it's I lazy. That, it's lazy. It's not so much that the 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 actual con like the. Uh, like the job itself of, of a reel or a TikTok is something that I don't like. It's the content that has found itself to be the most yeah. viral, yeah. if you will. Um, it's kind of like a it's it's kind of like acting out a meme in a lot of aspects, right? right? It's like people are taking, oh, let me take that meme and turn it into like a, a fifteen second skit or a, yeah. you know they're rarely a minute long. Yeah, and I'm not that creative. Yeah, and that. and to me it's like. You know, I don't mean to talk shit about anybody who does it, but I just when it when when it I think that content uh, if it's either supposed to be funny or it's supposed to be inspiring, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I guess in some aspects the TikToks can be funny, but it just feels like that's the like when I look at the motorcycle industry on on social media and I see everything going towards this TikTok thing where people have like this. This thing that's about to happen, and then spammed, and there's a bike that pops out of nowhere, and I'm yeah. like, man, what the fuck is this? Like, but it works. That's that's what Instagram is promoting. So you gotta, yeah. you know, lean just, into it to to do it. Like, if you're gonna be it, on dude. the platform, you gotta kind of gotta try to figure it out. I just out, want people but, to get the fuck off my lawn, dude. That's what I feel like. Yeah. I so he it. is the high maintenance guy. He's the high maintenance guy of the group, aren't you? I can see it. Yeah, he's grumpy, dude. Yeah, I'm famous. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. In well, small circle, in some societies. Just ask me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, dude. It's weird. No, but, I I get it though. Like, you know, I could you imagine being somebody that was on Vine and just that you know, just went away. Two million, two million followers and just crushing it. And then one day it's gone. Like, could you imagine? Could yeah. you imagine if Instagram went away? I've been preparing for that. How would we stroke our egos, like? Uh, well, Instagram. How let me tell you exactly it? the way I'm trying to do it, right? So first off, I have a podcast. I have this. This thing right, right. here kind of uh, is the only way I can kind of, uh, well, put it like this. You should always have a multiple platform right. presence, right? Yeah. Especially in social media. Yeah. It's hard to say that Instagram will ever go away, but it could fade away. You have to have something else come along yeah. that, that gives you that same vibe. Like when MySpace was out, Facebook kind of took away some of the glitz that fa the MySpace. Wait, miss. Yeah, MySpace was here. It got fucking weird when people's pages had stars falling down and songs playing and fucking. Famous. I never, I never did MySpace. Yeah. So I was like already. It was wild. Yeah, I and then Facebook's thing. come along. Facebook comes along and it looks less like a fucking Hello Kitty book or some shit like that. Right. Or, or yeah. those old coloring books or shit that I don't know. It's, it's probably a hard one to fucking even say, but. So it just kind of like Facebook came out. It's like, oh, this is like the adult version of social media. Right. I'm going to do this now. Yeah. And for a long time, it was simple. Yeah. And it was like a way to communicate and right. do exactly what MySpace was, or uh, right. Instagram was when it first came out. Right. But now with all these people trying to play these games of uh, holding your attention longer to sell more ad space and right. blah, blah, blah. It's yeah. like they're all leaning into, you know, they... Instagram did it with Snapchat a long time ago when Snapchat came and they made the fucking right. stories. The stories, yeah. And stories have now become a part of our life. Like, Absolutely. Eh, it's not really worth a post. Yeah. But I do want to fucking repost it. You know what I mean? If, right. You can still help people out with that Absolutely. shit or, you know, yeah. get, get messages out. But then Reels came along and Instagram's at a point now where like, hey, look, we want to compete with TikTok. Mm -hmm. We're going to pay you to make Reels. Right. You know, I've been getting checks from making reels, yeah. you know, and I don't even do them that much. Right. I hate to put it out there, but sit down, Steve. You know, he has to hit like 12, 13, 14 million uh, hits on on reels in a month, but he gets a fat fucking check. Really? Yeah, like Damn. good one. Yeah. You know what I mean? When he's making the reels, but yeah. Lisa Frank is the one I was thinking about <laughs> coloring books. Um, <laughs> so, 
you know, there is more of an incentive to do. I don't know how they, if they can or if they make money on TikTok. I think that I think they do. I have no idea. I don't have a TikTok account. But I feel like if you're gonna make videos, make a YouTube video. Like make a real thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, because there's like the story ish thing yeah. on YouTube, but. But you're not going to go to YouTube for that kind that, of content. No. And that's right? why I wish that's, these fucking platforms would just let, like, Instagram, it's cool that they have video. but Stay I, in your lane. Yeah, stay in your fucking lane. Like, yeah. you're going to push away half of your users because I do enjoy photography and I would like to see it. Maybe it's not right. as engaging as a five fucking minute video or a fucking one minute reel that you watch 40 times because you didn't see what happened. Right. Or that one, those people that like drag a video out for five minutes to see what, like there's so much stupid shit out there. Right. Yeah. That I get roped up into it. Yeah. I fucking hate myself for it. Right. I hate it. Yeah. Fucking hate it, dude. But you gotta like, but that's, you gotta do it. Like, no, you're not going to quit. Obviously not going to quit, but that's, I mean, we have to do it. That's, you know, in the motorcycle industry, Instagram is, is it, it's not, you know, when you meet somebody at the bike night, it's not like, Hey, what's your Facebook Hey, hey, what's your name? No, yeah. What's your Instagram? What's your face? Yeah, it's like, you know, what's your Instagram? Yeah. You know? And if somebody says, well, I don't really, like, you're weird. Don't yeah. talk to me. You know? Like, if you this don't have sus one. over here. He's right? suspect. Like, who yeah. wouldn't have one? If a guy asks your Facebook at a bike night, you should just hit him in the throat immediately. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, dude, you're weird. Dude, are you trying to rape me right now? <laughs> uh, but he's probably, if somebody did, he's probably got the hell yeah, brother costume yeah. on though the standard issue yeah you know the do rag the hey buddy, i'm gonna gloves. give you one chance to go get on your v-rod and get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> right. good bloody. exactly <laughs> oh, that's a good one yeah i don't know man it's i i try to stay uh with, with the i think that instagram probably has if they don't like do some things to kind of make it more incentivizing for photographers to stay on there and things like that it does open up the door for another social for media another to come platform. out. But yeah. the hard thing about that is that social media platforms don't really kick off until the youth takes a hold. Yeah. And then then the us fucking older guys yeah, come along. Yeah, then the parents look at it like, oh, that's kind of oh, cool. Oh, shit, that's some big-ass you know, booty on Right? There. Like, that's kind of cool. I should I should get one of those. And then, you know, and yeah. then we just kind of hang out there yeah. and then yeah. make it uncool. Yeah. But TikTok, I can't. I don't know. I haven't figured that one out. Like... <coughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm creative enough to to stage a video. Yeah, you know, yeah. like my reels are just me writing and mm-hmm. friends I'm writing with, and the idea is just to try to inspire people to yeah, ride. That, that like reel that Sax just made from the camp out, the one with the the Dr. Dre song on it. Yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, that was that was a that dude was walking around with a gimbal. Yeah. On a, with a fucking DSLR camera taking yeah. videos, and then it took him, not that it took him two weeks to make the video, but it definitely took him, yeah, like, it wasn't like a quick thing on the shitter, I'm going to put this reel out right. real quick, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and I, the reels that I do, I just have a GoPro, Yeah. That and I've got one of those Jaws clips, you know, so I'll, I'll have it on my handlebars, mm-hmm. and I'll just take it off and video Catch people and stuff, yeah. and like, I can, I can get to a gas station, and by the time everybody else is done, Sticking around, taking their helmets off, and you know, hanging out way <laughs> like too a complaint right there. Way too. Wow, that's I fucking hate that. It takes forever. Um, but by the time they're done doing that, I can I could have downloaded the video from my GoPro camera, you know, shortened it, rendered it, made it to fit Instagram yeah. framing, and posted it in that time. Like I, it's it's pretty easy. Yeah. So I'm not that. What, do you, what GoPro do you run? I have the 360. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But I never use, I don't use the, the three, I don't use the 360 function. Mm. It, it takes, it takes a lot more effort, and it's really not that much effort. It shows you how much effort I really want to put into yeah, yeah. pulling these videos down. But it takes a lot more effort to, to render that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I think the, personally, I think the 360 video is way overplayed. Like, you can tell when somebody's doing that, and it's the, you know, the one where it's zoomed all the way out, and you're, you know, sitting on top of the world kind of thing. It's like, it's like, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, okay, you got a 360 camera. Like, let's try something different here. Yeah. So I don't I don't use that function. And I've, I think if I got a different camera, I didn't even realize it. A buddy of mine pointed it out this weekend. He's like, hey, your, your, the video looks, doesn't look as good as it could. Let me, let me look. Because he was like, you can go into 4K or something. Mm-hmm. And... 
and I guess on the 360, you can't do that because of the 360 function. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe I'll get a new one because I never use that function. I, I just picked up the GoPro 10 for this next trip, and yeah. uh, I still have so much content from the camp out. I haven't even had a chance to look at it yet. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, it, it takes a lot of, I mean, the good thing about the GoPro is you can you can film in a portrait mode, right? Which will then give you the pretty much the parameters you need to do a a reel. Yeah. So like I'm gonna be conscious to try to capture a lot of shit in that format. Well, you and can normal. you can go in when you edit it. You can edit the yeah, frame. Yeah, you can, in. but you're gonna crop in to get it. Uh, well, because if a it's a little bit, if it's I don't know, you're a two three. So a two three. So two three. Yeah. If it's filming that way, yeah. and then you go to crop in two three that way, yeah. you're gonna have stuff on the side. But if you do two three here, yeah, so That's true. the three sixty camera, mm-hmm. I think they do a different rate. So if you're a four or five, then you know, is it four across five down or I whatever? Don't, that's all fucking Greek to me. All I know is I figured out the one that fits and it looks good, and that's what I put. Fucking send it, bro. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's too, I don't, I don't put a whole lot of time into it. I, I'm, I've done really well. It's time for my first pee break. Yeah. So yeah, I was just thinking that myself. All right. So who's on here? Grady, what's up, man? I see him. Scroll back up on this. Yeah. Big blue Dinah. Poppy Chulo, I'm late. What's up, man? Yeah, Justin's awesome. He's always been a, he's been a, he's always super involved in everything that I'm posting. I appreciate that. that. Dude, that's Scott. Yeah, and Scott's, magazine. Scott's always there too. <laughs> Scott's the best. Uh, yeah, he's always, uh-oh. he's always paying attention to it too. Big trouble. What's up, man? What's up, Mark? So he's going to, uh, born free as well are you going are you gonna make that right out there uh yeah i'm hoping my chicks don't listen to this but uh i'm leaning heavily towards when diverting on the end of the trip with jason going and okay so you're doing the whole trip with him yeah yeah okay doing the trip and then i may break off with him and do that last and, week and uh and born free yeah it's a good event i mean it's it's uh i went three years ago that on that trip okay. kyle and i went we were uh, both our bikes went down leading up to it, so we had to miss the riding part, but we yeah. had the time already t- taken off. Oh, okay. So we flew out, rented a little uh, bungalow in Venice, yeah. six blocks from where they stayed, and went to the show, hung out with them for a couple yeah, nights, so and then with it. they yeah. kept going, and then we partied for another couple nights and then went back. Yeah. No, it's it's a great event. I actually like the pre-party the most. What, Cook's at, Corner? At, uh, yeah, at Cook's. Yeah. yeah. And I'm putting it out now. And if I do make it to SoCal... Need a couch to stay on, so let that percolate, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on. Yeah, so you doing born free? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. In fact, I'm even. I'm hoping to come out to born free Texas as well. So I'm we'll still. See how I. I want to hopefully try to get. Uh, I don't know. I'd lo- I I want to help with that, but I don't. Yeah. They they re- uh, the guys in Texas were reached out a long time ago, but they I haven't did? heard anything. Okay. Since then, okay. um, I think it's a, it's going to be a very small like event. I don't think yeah. it's going to be as big as I don't. I, th- I still think I hopefully people will come because it's probably going to be the most simple version of, of it will ever be. Right. Um, so for where being at, where is that supposed to be at? You know? It's at the Yellow Rose Canyon. It's in what's that town called? Uh, Silverado. No, no, right. the one in Texas. Oh, well, Mount, it's, is it Mount, Mount Enterprise? Mount Enterprise. It's just where south. in Texas, like. It's states massive east, east. So Texas, Tyler, Texas, is like the next big city okay. east of Dallas. Okay, um, and it's southeast from there. It's pretty. It's pretty out there. Yeah, like very country roads. Um, not a lot of wilderness. It's more like country roads that are kind of like you know farms and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, wooded areas and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. yeah not a lot of. Ge- it's not top open topography land. Topography change. Right. Yeah. Okay. But beautiful. Still, the land's. Yeah, no, I, I'd like to make it out there. And so when this came up, I was, you know, because I had already thought, like, okay, I want to go yeah. to Born Free. I'm like, man, I don't want to 
go across twice. And yeah. so that's when it occurred to me, like, I'll just break off at the end of this Utah trip yeah. and blast down. And it worked out good. No, that's and, cool, man. I, I, and I appreciate minimize, you coming. minimize the trips across the Arizona desert as much as I can. Because, yeah. you know, there's it sucks. Like, there's nothing, nothing there this time of year, all summer. It's just yeah, hot yeah. and miserable. And, like, there's nothing fun about it. That's one of the one of the downsides of being in socal like mm-hmm. to get anywhere else you got to go across the desert it's yeah like, and, and probably the sucks. best time it is for you guys to ride is probably the worst time once you get out of socal right yeah it's because it, I mean? then it's rain or snow and all yeah. that other shit so it's like no i'm not i'm not a big fan of the once you the get rain. once you get east of phoenix like it can be pretty nice during the day but that's like in high desert man that shit will it, it will turn volatile. It's 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 some of the coldest weather I've ever ridden has been in the desert. Yeah, yeah, you for know? sure. Like just coming from Utah, you know, I mean, you don't think about it being super cold this time of year. But when I left St. George, Utah, I mean, it was it got down to like 22 degrees for a while. For like yeah. the first two hours of the ride here, it was 22 to 34 degrees for like two hours. So it's yeah, this. Well, it's pretty dope, man. Twelve hundred miles yesterday. Yeah. So how was it that? Was fun. Uh, it was. I hadn't gone that far uh-huh. before, so you know I was kind of playing in my head, like you know, can I do it? I wasn't, didn't want to make a big deal about it in case I wussed out and yeah. you know ended up sleeping in New Mexico or something. But you know, you just get going and you kind of get in a groove, and when you're by yourself, yeah. you know, you can do the gas stop gas go yeah and it was almost forced because i think the first three gas stops there was nothing i left pretty early i left st george around 4 45 ish mm-hmm. um you know and once you go through there it's it's all indian reservations yep. across northern arizona mm-hmm. and you know you, stores are closed you still can't use the bathroom yeah you know that kind of stuff and so the first few gas stops, you know, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll stop. I'll get some coffee and warm up a little bit or something. Nope, nothing here. Everything's closed. Just, all right, Keep well, on. maybe the next one, you know. And, dude, I had to take a crap for, like, the first three hours. I couldn't get to a place <laughs> that had a bathroom yeah. for, like, three hours. Um, you know, but once I got past that stuff and, and got down to, uh, I mean, it was a beautiful country going over. Uh, when you go from St. George you, you basically go around the north rim of the Grand yeah. Canyon. So the, um, what was that, 30, 39, mm-hmm. the Highway 39, whatever it is. But it's it's super pretty up in the trees. And then you're dropping down the canyons. The, the scenery's amazing. Yeah. You know, so I was able to kind of get rid of, stop worrying about the cold for a while just cause, because it was so pretty. Um, but then, you know, once you drop down yeah, into the like desert, it. then it's like... You know, I was finally able to go into the McDonald's, uh, wherever I met the, uh, the 40. So I must've been in Gallup. I think yeah. that's where, that's where I got on the 40. And so things were open again. So then you're just on the 40 you and it time, sucks. But yeah, that rip across New Mexico, even across the 40 is, uh, it's a lot. Yeah. No, I thought, I thought. At one point, I thought I was already in Texas, mm-hmm. and I went to I posted a story or something, and I hit the location, and it said it was in Santa Rosa. And for some reason, I had it in my head that Santa Rosa was in Texas. Oh yeah, and I put the location. I'm like, oh man, that's like I'm still like way in New Mexico. Like, oh fuck. I look at it like because I've, I've done 40 quite a bit, especially when we go to NorCal and we wanted to yeah. skip LA. Yeah, you get to this point where like you look at the width of like uh, I want to say. Across 40 is like either three, I think it's 380 miles from border to border. In Arizona, across uh, New Mexico. New Mexico, okay. I know it's not more than 400, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And Arizona's almost similar, but it where it fucks you is if you're staying on 40, when you hit Kingman, you do that 50 miles south and yeah. then 20 over. Yeah. That's where it gets you. And then, of course, you know. That's the biggest stretch I hate the most out of the entire trip going to NorCal from here is Needles to Barstow. Yeah, I can't. I fucking it's hate rough. that. 
It is rough. Oh, yeah. It's the worst. And it's so hot and there's nothing out there. So what's some of your favorite routes? Like where do you where have you been that you're like, man, I could do this a hundred uh, times honestly, and still be stoked? There, there's it, it's it's happened to me for New York now, but forever and still to this day, the energy of California, like when you're coming, especially when you're coming from NorCal to SoCal. Yeah. And you're coming through, you know, the Santa Monica Mountains into Ventura. Yeah. Or, you know, you finally hit the, you know, PCH over there by where Neptune's it is. Yeah. Or you're coming over the Grapevine into Santa Clarita. It's just this, like, jolt of energy. And the more yeah. you start seeing that fucking, the, just, like, on the mountain, seeing all the city. Yeah. I fucking love that feeling. That's so funny. It must be because I live there. Yeah. I hate going through there. <laughs> I fucking hate that. Yeah. Because yeah, the traffic... And the coast, the cops are always a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's funny because I hate that. that. I, uh, so this year on our trip that we're doing next week, uh, it'll be the first time I've ever ridden anything south of Carson City on the eastern slope of the Sierras. So, like, You're Mammoth, love all that, that shit. I've yeah. never done so any. I've of that. done, yeah, I've done Mammoth that whole strip a bunch. And when I was in the Navy, we would do a lot of, uh, training in fallon nevada mm -hmm. which is like 50 miles east of reno uh -huh. so that's like where top gun school is and, okay. and stuff so lots of huge uh aviation training facility uh great flying super challenging we're um, gonna circle back to that here yeah, in a little bit but um so even you know i think i started going up there in like 2003 or four mm -hmm. and so all the time i'd be dry even driving you know to get there a bunch and and i you know i would go camp from there i'd go mountain bike mm -hmm. mountain bike on on mammoth mountain it was amazing much younger age um but yeah so i know the sierras pretty well pretty so well. you're gonna you're gonna love that you mentioned uh on that last show that you wanted to do the tioga pass through uh through uh, so the 120 uh yeah the 120 if it's open, cause yeah. now it's all and that's shut a down. Yeah, and so make sure you check ahead of time. Yeah, because the last I was up there a year and a half ago, I think, and you still had to have a reservation to go across. To go across. Worst case scenario, we can go to one of the passes just north. Of yeah. It. So yeah. those are a buddy of mine went. That's our itinerary. A buddy of mine and I went up to. Uh, we went up the Sierras. And we were staying with his cousin in South Lake Tahoe. And we just, we rode every pass except for Tioga. Yeah. We just went up and Six. over. Yeah. It was. I've ridden all the ones from close to uh, South Lake Tahoe. Okay. I've ridden all those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the ones that go more into like Lodi area, Angel Camp, all that shit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. 80, I don't know, I've, I've never had a bad time on any of them. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. TBJ lives just south of Reno on the road that goes up to Mount Rose, which is yeah. one of the mountains up there. Yeah. And then that puts you on the north side right. of of South Lake Tahoe, right. and then we would rip along the coastline of that, which is a pretty badass ride, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, you're, you're going to like that a lot. And you, you guys are staying, you said you're camping in... So Mammoth is uh, is the third night, and it's we're, that's our first campsite. Okay, and then we're gonna do San it's, Juan Inn. It's still gonna be chilly up there, man. Ah, it's no. fucking cold at night, even in June. Yeah, yeah, you might. We're we're figuring it out. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe a good thing chilly. is with us. Hey, you, you guys can what? spoon, man. Like share a tent. You spoon, know what? It's cold. Chill. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go get a hotel. <laughs> yeah, the Motel um, Eight there is uh, is still pretty cheap. So the <laughs> worst I, case scenario, I have been worried. I've been here because I've been <laughs> leaning on my buddy Bruce up there, and uh, he was, lives right on the border of Washington and, and Oregon. And I was like, "Hey, man, so how's the weather? What are we looking at?" Because yeah. we were trying, we really wanted to camp some on that coastal ride up. Yeah, and um, you know, and we're hoping like you know, it, it's probably going to be hard mentally to ride in the rain if we have one of those kind of days, yeah. and then want to go set up camp yeah, in the rain. I can't do that. I think I'm that too. might be one of those deters and let, i don't even think we've booked like any campsites yet yeah i don't know um i thought everything was booked in 
all, I think all the camps. I think everything's done. If the campsites are booked, then that's cool because those are the hardest things to book, man. Yeah, campsites. It's a pain in the ass, especially when you have eight dudes and you're like, like you got to buy fucking eight campsites. Like, I feel get like, the fuck out. Yeah, of here. I feel like Jacob was having it. the hardest time in Mammoth. Right? Yeah, getting that, but I. I thought yeah, he, Mammoth gets pretty. I thought he crowded, but at, to him and we everywhere else, it might be. I, I, I like I said, I've kind of checked out right before the camp out. Yeah, if we're not, then I'm mistaken because I thought lodging was all booked and paid for, other than the the wing at hotels that we were. You yeah, we pick on the road on the fly. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's still pretty chilly in June. I'm so. bringing some cold weather shit just in case. So yeah, the cold weather doesn't bother me. I just want to be cold and wet. Yeah, it's not likely that you'll get rained on. But it can mm-hmm. still it can still be it can still be pretty cold, but yeah, the Sierras are that's amazing. Like the I haven't had a chance to do views. any of those yet. I stayed in, I camped once in uh, Three Rivers, just north of Fresno, on your way into the mountains. Okay, that was like just camps like right on the fucking river. It was raging. Yeah. It sounded bad. As uh, it was that trip when we were coming, we were headed to NorCal. Okay, and they were going to head back down to do Born Free. Okay, and uh, it was it was badass. Yeah. Then we tried to go into the the national park, and there was a line, and we it was on an incline, and we tried to uh, parked it and walked up and said, "Hey, we're on bikes. Do you think we can just pay? We'll wait in line, but can we just pay?" And then and they wouldn't. They, they were being cunts. They were like, "You know what? Like, I don't need we'll to see this on. that bad." Yeah, go back down. Yeah, and something to keep in mind is what like June probably not an issue, but. By the time you get in July, all the all the forest fires start to kick up yeah. all through that region. So, like, we were when we went to Sturgis last year. Yeah, you know, everybody wanted to go, you know, kind of up Idaho and and Oregon a little bit. It was come on over, a haze and it was. Bit. I mean, that whole area was on fire, and um, yeah, and the smoke haze was awful. Like two. Three, I, I think it was like 2018. I did a trip up through Tahoe and then all the way up through Oregon and over to Idaho. And as soon as we got, I remember it was we were pulling into Boise, Idaho, mm-hmm. and couldn't see couldn't see across the street. And we were in smoke that whole time until we got south of Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah, it was nothing but smoke. So. I remember me it, and my brother, when sucks. we first started this podcast, we had to go to NorCal to drop off a paint set mm-hmm. and uh, pick up some more from the shop I used to do a lot of work with up there. And so we went up there to do podcasts and drop off this paint work we did. And yeah. this was right when they were having the Napa Valley fires. Yeah. And, dude, it was like, it was so smoky. It was yeah. giving us headaches and shit. It's no joke, man. Yeah. At that time of year. And it's not, I don't see it letting up. Yeah. At all. I mean, everything is so dry. California is in such a bad drought, and it doesn't take much to light one of those. Again. And most of those, it's a it's a lightning strike that gets them started. Yeah, and or a fucking gender reveal party. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's such a West Coast thing. I went to Seattle, not on a bike, in 2017, and Vancouver was having horrible it's, wildfires. It's absolutely a West Coast thing. But like I feel it's, like it's, it's every year that's just pick the, pick the region. But yeah. There are the Sturgis trip. It's politics, dude. There was it's that exactly. <laughs> divert. I got to go to the bathroom, Jason. I'll be right back. Had to divert the route because of forest fires. So it's that's just part of the. Now I look at it as part of the weather. That's just part of the conditions. Yeah. I'm always going to have it. So last year when I left Sturgis, I the dude fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Although we're about to meme him. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, last year when I when, uh, left Sturgis, I wanted to go do that. Uh, that Glenwood Springs Canyon Pass we always talk about through Colorado, and it was covered in forest fires, so yeah. we couldn't do it. So, yeah, it's, a, it's shit. I don't know. I could imagine, like, living up there and just seeing a fire come towards your neighborhood, and you're like, do you just water hose your house for a while? Or, like, what the fuck do you do? Just start packing up all your shit and getting the fuck out? Or Yeah, that's one of those things as Texans I do. I, you see it from afar, and we have nothing really. I don't know. I guess there are some ranchers down in South Texas that have fires sometimes. We get in West control. Texas quite a bit uh, with the winds and but shit. But I've never had any personal experience with that, so it's something that it doesn't – it seems surreal to me. But, man, mm-hmm. I, I can only imagine how terrifying that would be. To well, it's like he was asking earlier, and it seems like the common question, especially with a lot of people coming in from out of town for the camp out, they, they really don't know how tornadoes are. Like, like so – 
how how is it going to be with tornadoes? Is yeah. this like that's like this like really common occurrence? It's like we're just always like maneuvering around oh, ter- tornadoes. Tara's mom, Western New York, they, you know what I mean? She has her phone. She's the alert set for Dallas, Texas, and anytime we get any sort of tornado watch warning, she's on the phone, and she's so worried about it. I'm like, it's from being here, a native Texan, it's yeah. kind of, I maybe I take it too, you know, take it too light, but you pretty much I, I roll it. Yeah. You know? I've never actually seen a tornado tornado. Like, I, I mean, obviously, the, it's very rare that they come during the day around here. It seems like it's always a nighttime thing with a storm passing through or whatever. Yeah. Or it gets so dark you really can't see anything. Yeah. I've been in gnarly conditions, but I can't say I've physically seen one with my eyes either. Yeah. I knew those stairs were going to almost kill me <laughs> Dude. when I first came in. <sighs> Defending the United States, but can't take some stairs on Dude. With, with two beers. Hey, man. I can't fucking see anymore. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So coming in last night... You know, it's dark, it's kind of late, and I've got Waze up on my phone. Yeah. It's a good thing I did, because there was a fucking speed trap set up. In Midlothian? It wasn't right that before, far. Right before you, yeah. Yeah. It drops down to 55 miles an hour. They fucking, yeah. I forgot to tell you about that. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> fucking, fucking Waze helped me out. Yeah. Because there were two. Yeah. Two, there was, and they're blacked out, they're just sitting there. I'm like, you motherfuckers, don't you have something else better to do? No, they don't. Nope. They don't. Nope. <laughs> yeah. It's not happening. Can't fuck that. around on Chris Kyle's Highway, bro. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Midlothian's the town that he lived in right Is before it? he passed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, that that's just the – I hate that shit the most out here. We we, I guess that's everywhere, the speed trap thing. Oh, it is. Absolutely. But, ah, man, it's just weird. Like, right there, it's it's like 70 or 65 miles an hour. Yeah, like, and come on. Like, spot, of course. One spot, it drops down to 55 for yeah. no fucking reason. Right. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, like, am I coming into another town or yeah, something? Is there a light I'm about There's to something yeah. going on, and, like, my night vision isn't what it used to be. So I'm I'm sitting there staring at my Waze app trying to figure out, like, where the hell I'm supposed to be going, and I can't read the numbers to see how many miles. Yeah. And then I, it's, like, police reported ahead. I'm like, oh, fuck. And, I'm, and, I saw, and there they were. And yeah. then police report. Right there again. I'm like motherfuckers. Like, yeah, yeah. I'd have been pissed if I got fucking pulled over at mile, you know, <laughs> one thousand one hundred and fifty. That's of that whole day. I'd have been a little upset, but no, it was fuck those guys. So you you brought up that Top Gun school. So yeah. as a <laughs> with the new movie coming out and all that shit. Oh yeah. How like uh, and obviously you're a helicopter pilot. Yeah. Do you go through the same kind of programs with uh, that? Yeah, so you mentioned the movie. So anybody in my age group or era of going in to be a pilot, if anybody says that they wanted to become a naval aviator for any other reason besides the Top Gun movie, they're fucking full of shit. Like, See, that's what I say about Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> if, if you got a Dinah from 18 to 21, 2018 to 2021, you were, yeah. The Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And, uh, but yeah, so that, that movie. Did people that in that time frame also say, oh, no, what movie? Yeah, you know, like, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. so no, like dude, you'll, you'll be in, you know, you're you're in, you're all the way through training. You got your wings. You're at the fleet, you know, and and the subject will come up like, oh no, no, I wanted, I've wanted to be a pilot my whole life because of my dad or my grandfather or something like that. I'm yeah. like fucking liar, like you all <laughs> wanted to, and then guys will be like, so did you want helicopters? I'm like fuck no, I didn't want fucking helicopters. <laughs> I wanted to be fucking Maverick, but I just wasn't that fucking good. <laughs> Like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I just don't, yeah. you know, I work hard. I don't give up and, you know, but I couldn't, my brain couldn't think fast enough to keep up with a very fast aircraft. Like I yeah. couldn't, you know, I would just get behind it and a helicopter going a hundred miles an hour. Like, oh yeah, I got that. Yeah. I can fly the fuck out of that thing. Have you so, ever flown a fl- flighter jet? No, never even been in one. For real? Yeah. Have you flown a plane? Yeah. So we all start. Uh, primary flight school for everybody is in a fixed wing airplane. Mm. So it's kind of like a turbo prop, like a imagine like a World War II type of airplane. Mm. Um, so everybody starts in that. And those ones. And move. you flew like so. This is this is a dumb uh, ad lib to throw in here, but 
When I think of anything built in 1940, anything, I can't think of it as being reliable, especially. No. So when I say a World War II era style, it's, you know, if you think of it, it's just, you know, a propeller airplane that can, you know, do barrel rolls and loops and all that kind of shit. No, they're newer. But the first helicopter that I flew in the fleet was a Vietnam era aircraft. So it was, I got to my first fleet squadron in 2001 and uh, the aircraft that I was flying, you know, had been flying in Vietnam, like Mm. an early Vietnam because all the newer H-46s went to the Marine Corps. So we got all the the old versions. Mm. So like we had, we had one aircraft in the squadron that was like a Frankenstein. It, they had taken one, the front half of one aircraft and the back half of another one and put it together, you know, and it had been flying for 30 years and that one never really flew right. Like it just didn't, it just didn't fit right. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a great aircraft, not very reliable. Yeah. Yeah. We called that thing the whistling shit can of death. It was, I think tried to kill me many times. So what, when did you go into the, all this? Um, I, I got my wings. So I started, I technically enlisted in 1996, mm-hmm. um, but that was just. Was it because Tupac died? For the, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was Top Gun, man. Um, in 1996. Terrible. I didn't really even watch. I watched that a little bit, yeah. but that's a lot of guys will joke and say like, You're "Oh, that's liar." <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but I actually didn't. I was watching like A Team, and I don't yeah. remember much about Airwolf, so we yeah. must not. It have wasn't watched that it. big of a show, but yeah, yeah but I don't. I just remember the the existence of Airwolf. Yeah, but there'll be there'll be guys that will say, "No, I you know I want to be a helicopter pilot because of Airwolf, not Top Gun." Like, well, what fuck Black you. Hawk Down, like right around the same time that you. Well, that's when the actual event, the actual event happened in 93, and that movie came out. Yeah, I think that movie was like... Late 90s, early 2000s? Yeah, I think it was early 2000s, because, yeah, I used to watch the fuck out of that. That was a badass movie. movie. Yeah, it was a good movie, because, you know, once I started flying helicopters, I'm like, okay, what can I do that's cool in a helicopter? It's like, well, okay, we want to try to figure out how to get into the special ops stuff, and... So I was, I'd watch that movie all the time. Well, you know, to that, to that same notion to kind of bring it back to motorcycles for a second. When I first got into motorcycles in 2004, right? You know what my big, you know what was available to watch about motorcycles? No, no, no. <laughs> I wrote, I got into sport bikes before I got into Harleys. Okay. So my two movies of choice were Torque. Uh, you ever heard of that? Nope. Okay. If you want to watch the most wildest shit you've ever seen. Is it good? No. <laughs> no? Because that's what somebody said. You recommended that movie there, and somebody came back and they're like, full of that shit. thing's crazy. Yeah, they're full of shit. Yeah. yeah. That movie's great. Torque has got Ice Cube in it and some other people in yeah. it. Yeah, And okay. they, were, they were sport bike fighting. The, yeah. the white guy with the shoulder-length hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the one with... Lawrence Fishburne, is it? No, that's that, the good man. one. That's Biker Boys, right? <laughs> Biker Boys that's is good. Kid Rock. Is it? Yeah. He's it's dog. Gooder. Yeah. So that's what inspired you. That's. Well, I mean, that's I all. Mean, so when I got my bike, I remember I bought it, and I rode it home, and it was snowing outside. So I immediately went to Barnes and Nobles at the time, yeah, and looked for anything I could find content wise to kind of. It was interesting, so I looked for any kind of books. Yeah. Um, and then that's what we did. Yeah, yeah that, that you didn't just go on YouTube or, my, or right. Honestly, at this time, I think MySpace was out, but there, it wasn't like a place you go to yeah. find out things about motorcycles, right? right? And, um, but I imagine it's the same thing if you get into one of these type of things. Like, you probably have a lot of wartime things to kind of uh, fill that gap, but yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I would watch, yeah, I'd watch all that shit. I mean, yeah. I'm very influenced by. Uh, movies and TV shows yeah. that that happens, and I think that's everybody. Maybe it's just me. I feel I don't like know. most people are. That nobody wants yeah. to admit it, but yeah, like people say, it's Sons of Anarchy. Like, oh, that's gay. I wouldn't watch that. Like, motherfucker, you so, know you watch that. Don't 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 and don't and tell great. me yeah. that you yeah. didn't watch that. You know, one one of my buddies was actually posted on a story him watching the current season of Mayans and I was blown away. Like somebody would freely admit and post out for the world to see that he's watching the Mayans. I'm like, good on you, man. Like, 
Yeah. I'm on record. I've watched all seasons. Yeah. I, uh, I've been pot committed from the beginning. The first two were rough. Three ended on a high. Yeah. And my Hulu thing ran out because my chick's cutting the cord, and that was one of the things. So I'm a couple <laughs> episodes behind, but so far this, this was it four, season four. Yeah. It's been good. I like it. It's yeah. a, yeah. I don't I've been watch watching it. it. I don't watch a ton of TV. It's a guy soap opera. Yeah, that's it. That's, motorcycles involved. That's exactly yeah. it. It's I don't a, care if it's, it's a soap opera yeah. for dudes. Like, why? With motorcycles, I'm in. I'm done. That's yeah. it. Why, why do we have to You've act so tough? You've got my money. With everything that we do. Yeah. Like if you've got a motorcycle, why do you have to? Why do you have to act tough? Like some people have the confidence in themselves it. to be laughed at, yeah. right? And so, like, yeah, fuck yeah, I like Torque or whatever the movie is or where the TV show is, right? Yeah. But then there's there's other people that are like, oh man, like I can't. They don't know. They don't have that personality to take to be the butt of a joke, right? Right. Yeah. And that it's I, I understand. For, yeah. It's not for everybody, but yeah. Fuck man, like. It's a lot easier life if you just learn to laugh at yourself yeah. a little bit. No, I've bit. got I have a I have a friend that's that is full patch member in a one percent club and he freely admitted recently that his son is named after Jax Teller. He said that was a fucking badass show yeah. and he's a badass dude and that's who I name my son after. I'm like yeah. All right, fuck yeah. So my younger son is his first name is Mitchell and that is a name from Obviously, Pete Mitchell, Maverick. Uh That's where that came from. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we, me and my wife, just uh, not last night, but the night before, watched Top Gun again, the original one. Yeah. Fucking holds up, dude. For a long time, I could quote. I watched that so much, I could probably quote almost the entire movie verbatim. Are you going to go see the new one when it comes out? The night, better better fucking believe it. Yeah. So there was actually showing. There was actually. I'm too old for midnight showings. I probably won't do that. They don't do that now. These movies come out on Thursday during the day. Do they? Good. Yeah, you can catch that movie at 3 p.m. on Thursday. No problem. Perfect. Because I might be able to stay awake through it. I think it's on Tuesday. Actually, it comes out on Tuesday. But down at North Island, the Navy base on Coronado, um, they did a premiere. Two weeks, I think it was two weeks ago. So like Tom Cruise was there, and they did a whole premiere. And had buddies posting pictures being there. And I'm like, fucking thanks, man, sick invite. Like, you know, Sarcastic. like I, I, sick invite. Thanks. There's nothing like a thunder. Nothing like not getting invited. Right? To something yeah. You love like, to do. come on. Of course, I want to go see. Like, it. Oh, I had to go to this dumbass thing. Right? Day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The same fun. dude. The same dude. That's you know a captain now. That, you know, 20 years ago, I was like, oh, no, Top Gun's stupid. And he's up there, you know, trying to get a picture with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Like, you motherfucker. Life, bro. Right, exactly. Like, motherfucker, you're not fooling anybody. Dude, I, I've joked about this a lot, but back in the day when, like, probably 2013-ish, there we used to have watch parties for Sons of Anarchy when the new episode would yeah. drop because it always dropped on the same night we hosted Bike Nights. Oh, did it? So we were like, you know, hey – we get a bar to show the show. Yeah. And we'd just be a whole bunch of bikers and they're quiet as fuck. Like, then a commercial comes like, right. oh, that was wild, <laughs> yeah. man. Right? Yeah. Fuck, do you think he's going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> do you think Tara's going to live? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. And that, you know, I mean, kind of back to the whole meme thing. It's was, just like, we, we take ourselves so seriously. Like, it's a fucking TV show. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't know why people think it's some sort of badge so of honor to say, like, fuck no, I've never watched one single episode of that. Like, so you, you're you ever watch that show, that movie that came out with like Tom Hardy on it called like a, the warrior or warrior or something like that, where no. he ends up, it's like an MMA type of show. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fucking good. I like it as yeah. a, as someone that does not really know how to fight. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll act like I can. Right. Um, but it was a great show, a great story. It was kind of an unrealistic kind of situation. If you ever watch MMA, because they were like, right, but it's a but show. So it how realistic can it be? Exactly. You know? and, and that's one of the things So I, I remember at the time I was working that shop I was telling you about, and a lot of the people in there were all MMA fans. We used to watch UFC, yeah, We'd have little watch parties and shit like that, right? And there would always be like one or two dudes in the shop. Maybe they were hanging out or whatever. Like, oh, that movie's it's so stupid. I just I don't know why they put something like that out there. It's, none of it's real. And I'm like, well, have you watched UFC? It's not entertaining, right? Like, if someone's gonna if they put a real fight in the middle of a movie. And that fight was 30 minutes long yeah. of, of people trying to get position on each other in jujitsu on the ground. Right. That movie's not going to do well. It's going to be fucking boring. Exactly. And if you – I mean, there's certain things about motorcycling that is appealing to us as experienced people on a bike. Yeah. 
that's going to go over somebody's head. Right. You know what I mean? There was like Jason Momoa did this little movie a while back, like Road to Paloma or something yeah. like that. I thought yeah. that was cinem- cinematography wise was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I didn't so. really understand what the fuck was going on in the movie much, but right. I guess just watching his beautiful motherfucking ass down the road, that fucking guy. You know, I'm so jealous. Oh my god, damn it! He's tall, full head of hair. Yeah, it's not even fair. He's got abs. Fuck that guy. It's bullshit. And he drinks beer and rides bikes. This yeah. is, this fuck is, that this guy. Is bullshit. He probably gets and he gets paid to ride ride a bike too. That's cool. Fucking bullshit. What a nerd. Yeah, but. So you were asking me about Fallon and the Top Gun stuff. Yeah, so... We went down a rabbit hole there. How, uh... So they, all, they do all the flights up there in the northern Nevada there, or...? Yeah, so Fallon is 50 miles east on the 50 mm-hmm. from Reno. And then the all the working areas, all the flight areas, kind of go north, south, and east from there. And mm-hmm. it's a he- massive, massive complex and um so yeah they have uh the top gun schools there so the the fixed wing guys every every navy platform aircraft has a a department at the top gun school you know so teaching higher levels of whatever it is that we do Mm -hmm. um you know and uh so the jet dudes are out you know doing all their shit and not exactly sure what they do. I flew with them forever, tables. but what's that? Is there lunch tables where cool guys get to sit at this table? So on the ship, in the wardroom, yeah, it's it's it takes a while to kind of to kind of break through all that stuff, you know. So the first you'll go through they're called workups. So for like six months, you'll be on and off the ship and going doing different things and the whole air wing will be there. So all the different platforms will be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so everybody's interacting. The first time everybody comes together, I mean, it's, yeah, that's what it feels like is, you know, like they're, they feel like they're too cool to talk to you and, you know, oh, yeah. and then all the helo guys are like, oh, those guys are all, those guys are all assholes. So and what, is that the type of helicopter you- Fly? That was the very first one that I flew. Yeah, that's the CH forty six. Somebody I saw a comment on there, the uh, C magnet. Absolutely, that thing wanted to hit the water as much as it wanted to fly. <laughs> yeah, I got my boots wet twice in that thing. Does one it the, float? Uh, not for very long. <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, um, it's. For a while, they would have these floats installed on the side of it uh-huh. that would go off. But those things were so unreliable, they would they would. So deploy. what is the purpose of that top plane? Is it more of a personnel, like, drop-off? So for the Marines, yeah, it's to, to take Marines, you know, from back here to put them in the fight. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the Navy, it was to move stuff and people from one ship to the other okay. and then a few other odds and ends but the main the main mission the very first squadron I was in our main mission was either uh, basically SAR support so the dudes that pulled goose out of the water yeah you know that was that was our main thing and then we would move shit from mm. from one ship to the other so some of the best flying that I ever got to do so much fun old aircraft just nothing but stick and rudder you know like you really had to know how to fly an aircraft to get it to do what you wanted to do uh, but the mission set was just kind of stale and how, wasn't did, going how does that in. work like when you go when you enlist to to even get into that program to become any type of pilot well the so the enlisted guys don't so the enlisted guys are, are more the in aviation, they'll be the mechanics for okay. the aircraft, or in the back, they'll be the rescue swimmer. Um, uh, you know, so they're in the in the Navy. You have to be an officer to be a pilot. In mm-hmm. the Army, you can be a warrant officer. Um, so it's kind of a blurred space in between yeah. enlisted and officer. But in the Navy, you absolutely have to be an officer. So you have to go. You have to go to college, get a college degree. And either go through, I went through officer candidate school, which is a 13 week program uh, um, down in Pensacola, Florida. A lot of people go through ROTC, so they're in their regular college and they have to dress up and play Navy so I think once that's a what week. Homeboy, my, my, my wife's brother's about to do is go to that. 
Pensacola thing. Is he? Okay. Possibly. That, I know he's getting a higher rank now. Okay. That could be. Yeah. I mean, if he's getting commissioned, then, yeah, I don't know. But uh, at, so there's officer candidate school, there's ROTC, and then there's the Naval Academy. So there's an even amongst those groups there's all kinds of yeah you know i mean the the animosity in the motorcycle industry that we feel i think it's just human nature it doesn't matter yeah, it's you know i was just trying yeah that's it i mean it's you know i'm cooler than you because i went to the naval academy or or you're a dork because i went to officer candidate school yeah. or you know you're a dork because you have apes and not t-bars oh, so yeah. it's all the same shit some cops and firemen shit were Ultimately, you're on the same team. You got each other's back, but you're going to fuck with each other. Right, exactly. Sure. Yeah. Same shit. Like, yeah, they yeah. make fun of each other, and they... Well, it's yeah. the same thing. We're all, like, we could all be at a bar as bikers and completely different, almost wanting to fight each other, but if yeah. somebody that's not a biker fucks with a biker, yeah. it's kind of yeah, like we all see red. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's... So the, the program... You know, so once you you got to get your commission first, so you got to become an officer first, uh -huh. and then if you're selected to go to flight school, then you know you got to go to flight school and and do a bunch of ground school stuff and a bunch of water survival stuff. I hated that shit. Like you had to, what was that movie, uh, Officer and a Gentleman? You remember that one? Um, I don't know if I know that one. It's the one where the guy. Uh, yeah, Officer and a Gentleman. You had to have seen that one. That's, it's like uh, what the hell's that guy's name? I like rom coms, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that one Kevin Costner? No, I forget what it is. Anyway, so like you got to go through water survival stuff. You're getting drowned all the time. It fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you make it through, and then you go and you start flying, and that part sucks and it's hard. And then when you're not as good as the jet guys, then you get to fly helicopters. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, no, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, flying, I did it for 20 years. I mean, I got to um, see a bunch of cool shit. I went to Iraq a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, you know, it's it's a totally different environment. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you go, and I, I know a lot of former military guys, whatever it is they're doing, you come back, and it's just not the same. You yeah. know, you don't feel the same, and that's the whole PTSD thing. Um, you know, it's real, you know, it's, even if you feel like when you're an officer and you come out, you're like, Oh no, that's, you know, PTSD, that's an enlisted guy is going to get that. Or, you know, a Marine's going to get that that was in combat. Um, but you know, you come back and it's, you, you spend so much time in such a tight knit group and you've got a purpose every single day you get up and you know, you have a purpose, then, then you're not in it. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, what's the purpose? And, you know, and no offense, but then you get people coming up to you all the time, like, okay, thank you for your service. And then you're like, you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. Um, but then you go out and you try to try to get a job in something that's not related specifically to the military. You know, those same people, the same companies that are, you know, we'll post all the pictures and run all the ads about supporting veterans, you know. They're not hiring veterans. They don't. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. And it's a very, very difficult transition that, um, you know, lots of guys really struggle with. And, and, and to be honest, I tried a bunch to get back. Uh, before I went in the Navy, I was a stockbroker. And I tried to, right before I retired, I went back, I got... I got my MBA and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and get into finance and, and yeah. do that kind of stuff. And once I, I finished my MBA program and started to go and apply, it was fucking ghosted, man. Like I didn't, nothing. Cause I mean, I was 40, how old was I? This is probably three, four years ago. So I'd have been 40, 46, mm -hmm. 47 years old, something like that. You know, people, one, you're kind of old. And then people are kind of weirded out about ex-military guys. They think everybody's going to snap and go crazy, you know. And, and so it wasn't a very welcoming environment. And frankly, I, that's when I just decided to go into real estate, um, you know, because it was I didn't have to work with other people. I didn't have to work for anybody. I could do it myself. And, you know, and I make 
good money. Yeah. So I just gave up. That's got to be a, a crazy thing, right? Because for 20 years, off and on for those times, like you're living this life in these different areas, maybe not all war zones, but, you know, mm-hmm. definitely not – you're not you're not living life the way us civilians live life where we wake up and we're like fuck I hate my job right. we go to work and mm-hmm. you know go get go to the bar afterwards and talk shit about our our life choices and things but right. I think that I ignorantly think that there could definitely be some PTSD type feelings by just simply the lifestyle change it is. not yeah. so much the uh, as as is I'm trying to say like along with the aspect that maybe you saw some horrendous sh- horrendous shit or experienced right. it. Yeah. But just also the fact that, like, for half your life, in a sense, like, you've been living this life in a, in a much different world. Yeah, and that's, you know, the suicide rate amongst mm-hmm. veterans is, is astronomical. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there's a, a hashtag that goes around all the time, you know, 22 is too many. Every, you know, 22 veterans a day are are killing themselves. Yeah. And, you know, and, and when you're in, you're like, Oh wow. You know, those, those guys must be, you know, weak or, you know, they're not tough enough. They can't handle it. Yeah. But then once you get out and people that are still in, you know, your buddies, they just keep going. They have to, they just keep going with their career and what they're doing. And then you're just kind of there like, yeah, you know, and everybody's gone and you know, that purpose is gone. Um, you know, and it's, it's tough. And then yeah. you throw in, you know, s- traumatic stuff that, that people can see, um, you know, then it makes it even worse. Yeah. You yeah. Know, the it's a weird one, man. You know, and there's obviously you can, you know, you can play both sides of it where there's a lot of things on this side of the, uh, on this side of the spectrum that, that, um, that prey on that, that yeah. these, these organizations that come out and want to support it, but you really never see any real thing happening because I don't know. I feel like all that stuff at like once again, a very ignorant perspective here, uh, it, it's a federal issue that needs to be have t- dealt with by a government type thing. Yeah. You know, whether it's programs or, uh, and in, I mean, how do you teach in the government's someone? defense? Like the VA has changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. Like I now, like I, I will have the VA reaching out to me all the time. Like, Hey, do you need this? Do you need that? You know? And I hear stories of back in the day, like, you know, you couldn't go into the VA to, you know, to get a bloody nose fixed. Yeah. Um, Well, do you you think maybe there's like with you being someone that's completely done a military career and retired from it, that there's a bigger perk set system for you as a, as that versus someone that might've did one, I, I mean, I don't know because yeah, yeah. that's not the case I'm in. But, I, I mean, I, I talk to – to I've met a lot of people in the motorcycle, in motorcycle industry that, that um, you know, did four years, six years, eight years, something like mm-hmm. that. And, you know, the VA is – it's a totally different environment, you know. So after September 11th, everybody – you know, looked at first responders and military in a very different, different light. So the, the benefits started to, to be a lot more prevalent and yeah. things were easier, but, um, you know, it just because the benefits are there, you know, the service member has to take advantage of them. And that's, you know, getting, we are taught going through the military that if you show weakness, you know, like you can't show weakness. Yeah. Ever, if you show weakness, you know you're not you're not fit for duty. Like as a as a pilot, we wouldn't even go to medical to get seen for anything because if we did, they'd put that in our medical record, and that could that can disqualify us from flying. Mm. So, like you know, we guys would have all kinds of significant issues. Would never you would never report that yeah. to your flight surgeon. Like if you had a super cool flight surgeon uh, that you went to see that got it, you know, and you can be like, "Hey man, like I've got whatever issue," and he's like, "All right, here, take some of this," you know. But that's Rare. I think I met two of those yeah. in twenty years, um, you know. So it's it's so you the irony is people will say, um, you know, okay, when you retire. You know, report all all of your medical issues to the VA so that you can get your disability. Well, most guys won't report that shit because it'll take them out of the fight. 
Yeah. So there's nothing in your record for you to go after because if you report that, mm. you're gonna they're gonna take you out of the fight. And anybody that's you know a war fighter, the worst thing that you can do to them is to take them out of the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. So yeah, I mean, for 20 years, I I just I volunteered for every deployment ever. Like I was like always just put me in coach like i i want to go mm-hmm. like okay well you know you're gonna be gone for whatever like i want to go put me in and you know in retrospect was it the best idea you know i lost a marriage over it i i was deployed for you know almost a decade straight and that's when my kids were little so i lost you know 10 years of their most formative years mm-hmm. and uh you know going through a divorce with their mother you know, they looked at me yeah. like the bad guy, you know. So, I mean, it's it's my younger son, I think it hit the hardest. And it wasn't until he was about 16 when he finally was old enough and mature enough to figure out, like, okay, you know, dad's a good guy. He's not an asshole. Mm-hmm. This wasn't all his fault, you know. And then we started rebuilding a relationship. But even now, like, it we don't talk all that much and it's, yeah. you know, it's kind of crushing, you know, we'll come into the room and like, how was your day? Good. How was, you know, it's like, yeah, we just, yeah. I, I couldn't imagine. We lost all of that. And my older son, the one I told you that has the substance abuse issues, like he can't help, but think, you know, if I wasn't gone for a decade, yeah. Could I have prevented a that bigger influence on yeah. a daily basis? Kind yeah. Of things. yeah. And you know, so, that adds to the guilt of everything else that you deal with as a, you know, somebody outside of the military. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you had what you just talked about is even like the normal pressures that a lot of people have uh, being, you know, being a, a male trying to create, uh, you know, financial, you know, success or just security yeah. within your household, but then also trying to be the best dad in the world, the most attentive, the most, Right. everything you know because i don't feel like our generation does well with planning to have kids very well no it's more like the first two are mistakes and then yeah. maybe hey i think we got our life together let's have this third one real quick right. you know what i mean but you know I, I feel like for some of us i mean i have friends that that went the college route and mm-hmm. they kind of you know had their low parts of careers and now at this point as i'm knocking on 40s door they're all got decent 401ks right. they've got it they've owned a house they got a car they have a very comfortable life mm-hmm. uh i don't know if they but then they look at my life and i live cheap as fuck i got a rad bike i travel yeah. the country on motorcycles yeah. i have no i have very little mm-hmm. money in the bank but you know i know how to make it real good yeah so it's like i so i look like a I look like a fuck it. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be that guy now. I want to go fucking live my life. And yeah. then they, I'm like, I just wish that I could like go be responsible enough for a while and have that security. Yeah. You know, cause this world that I live in, even, you know, it, it takes a toll when you're, you're constantly having to be involved in so many things and right. even things that don't necessarily pay your bills. Yeah. But for the betterment of this community of motorcycling, I feel like you have to be a part of it. Right. And then you get your son and, you know, you're trying to bring him into it. But he really just likes Fortnite right now. Right, and, exactly. You know, it's a bitch. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. but I, I it's like how I just compared my fucking <laughs> <laughs> hard life to yours. Yeah, but I, I mean, you know. I, so when I retired, like I, I struggled big time to try to, to find, you know, a direction. And, yeah. and that's why I, I bought the Dyna that I have. It was yeah. like, you know, like, fuck, okay. Maybe, you know, I'll reconnect with, you know, the the motorcycle lifestyle I had when I was younger. I grew up on the back of my mom's bike and my stepdad rode and we would rip all over the place. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, those were some of the best years, best childhood memories, memories yeah. that I have. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll try to reconnect with that. And it's it's helped a ton. But, you know, in those first few years when you're when you get a bike and you're riding, you're trying to figure out 
you know, showing up to different groups and trying to figure, you know, like you don't want to ride by yourself all the time. Yeah. You know, now we've figured out that like riding by yourself can be really cool. Yeah. But initially you're trying to figure out where you, fit in, where you fit in, how you do this shit, going to bike nights and sitting awkwardly in the corner and, you know. I've had to do it. I was, that was me. Yeah. I did it. Did you have to do it? Yeah. I know Jaden had to do it too. I mean, we all had to be, you all have to be vulnerable you do. to get yeah. in this world. I mean, very few people get like the, they, they win the fucking first round draft pick right. lottery of like the first guy that showed up to bite night. We try to do a good job. Jaden does a way better job at it than me. When we see someone new at bike night, one of us, usually Jaden or even Kyle, Kyle, uh, Franz has gotten really good about Franz it. Franz is good about it, yeah. Matt, Matt helps when he's there. We uh, try to yeah. go reach out and bring people into yeah. things so they don't feel See, like... See, that's it. not my personality. I mean, I'm such an introvert. Like, it's a, it's, I could I could sit in the corner by myself and stare at my phone So our all bike night long. is small enough where if you were one of the guys that's there every week, mm -hmm. you would probably be out of that introverted shell because this would feel like your house. Yeah. Your, you're in your safe space, and when you see someone hanging out there... You're probably more willing to hey yeah. hey come, man, what's your name where are you from yeah you know kind of situation even then it takes some effort there's times where your own life is crazy work's been nuts the last couple of days all you've been thinking about is getting here and yucking it up with him then two or three other guys enter you know then I don't I just don't feel like on I don't feel like meeting right. you. I don't feel yeah. like doing that tonight I yeah. just want to. Bitch about the old lady, bitch about the job with my four or five guys. Right. Everybody else could, but you can't for the betterment of the community, like you said. Right. The growth of the bike night, you got to make everybody, because you never know in that one night when that's the night somebody said, fuck it. They took the chance. They got off the couch. Yeah. They're there. They're, are, they're in that vulnerable state. Right. The least I can do is if I see them kind of, you know, you know the social cues. Yeah. Hey, can I be, buy you a beer? Where'd you come in from? Right. What's your name? What's your Instagram? Yeah. Nice to meet you. So you you know you were telling me earlier that like you took a a, a ride yourself mm -hmm. at one point just to kind of clear your head. Yeah. How has that been for you with dealing with some of your kind of Honestly, that's you know, I got the bike thinking that that it would help. Yeah. And help me reconnect with some of the you know, few good memories that I have. So when I left the military, it wasn't on the best terms okay. like I, i've never i've never followed rules very well and i joke i joked with about this one day with somebody and i was like yeah i think i got kicked out run out of every squadron i was in and i sat there and i thought back i was like yeah you got got run out of that one i got run out of that one out so of that you had one that realization i had earlier when i realized i'm the high maintenance one. <laughs> yeah yeah no i was just always trying to do more in my mind i was trying to do more then it, it wasn't like I was a fuck up and I was, you know, getting a DUI and, uh, you know, the irony is now, you know, I got run out early for trying too hard, leaning way too forward and trying to do things that, that we didn't really do. Mm -hmm. And I had peers as an officer, that officers that got DUIs, they're now captains you know and i got run out that's the irony of it um, you see you know, i'm still a little yeah. bitter about it um but yeah i mean I, I so i i took the time and figured out like okay some of the best memories i have are from you know from being on a bike and yeah and going to rallies and um you know being on the road and camping and stuff so i was like all right well, like let's let's fucking try it and um uh, and then it started to work, you know, so I was trying to find people to ride with, you know, i found some people that would ride locally, do stuff. Um, you know, I tried prospecting for a club and it just wasn't, wasn't a good fit. So that kind of, you know, let me ask you this, yeah. like as a, as a veteran, would the veteran based clubs be appealing or does that kind of like this constant reminder of, being back into that world. I, like, I know it's good to have veteran friends. Again, yeah. But would that be too much leaning back into what was? I don't think so. Like, I, I, I the one, the, the club that I was hanging around with and prospected for, it, it was just a bad fit. So yeah. I didn't, the, I didn't, I didn't know any better at the time. You know, I, I should have 
spent a lot more time in the hang around period to just kind of get to know people more. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was in a hurry to try to, you know, find a tribe, trying to fit in somewhere. Yeah. And I think they were, you know, happy to, to build numbers. I don't want to say, you know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but I know how it works. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I started prospecting a little bit and did a really long ride with a few people. And it just like, when we got back from that, I was like, no, this is not, yeah, not a good fit. Like this won't, this won't work. Um, and so that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth from just riding in general. And that's kind of when I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'll just, you know, I'll just ride by myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I went out and I blasted on a long solo ride. I mean, not long looking back now from some of the rides I've done since, but at the time, like this was long at San Diego all the way up through Utah and four corners and, uh, down the devil's highway 191 on the east side of arizona down to tombstone and back mm-hmm. so i mean it was i don't know three thousand miles ish something that's like right. that that's a rip and you know 100%. solo um you know hit some good challenges along the way uh but when i left for that i was like man my like i'm way too in my head like things are not good mm-hmm. like i was struggling i've remarried um you know, and, and, and my wife now, she, we met after I was done deploying. So yeah. she never knew me or had to deal with me, you know, as deployment one gone all yeah. the time. You know, I was, when she met me, I was always home yeah. and, you know, so didn't really understand, you know, that previous life. And so, you know, I would get a lot of the, I don't know how to say this, like, um, you know, I would get some comments like, you know, you should just just move on like that yeah, part's yeah. over or, you know, um, get a real job or, you know, stop, you know, stop playing, playing biker so much. And, yeah. you know, and and uh, we're with that now yeah. she gets it. Um, but it, it was a struggle. Like, if you want to complain about it, we have a great bike night where we do it <laughs> all <laughs> the time. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and it it. it it took a while, but you know, like, so I was struggling with PTSD stuff. You know, I was getting a lot of pressure from the wife. My kids fucking hated me. My ex-wife fucking hated me. Yeah. You know, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. You know, and I jumped on my bike and left, and you know, I had a lot of demons that I was trying to outrun, um, and uh, didn't really outrun. Yeah, you were but telling me about that trip and how some of the the challenges with the weather on it. Yeah. Could could you say that some of like those riding challenges of going through those harsh conditions of weather kind of put you uh, obviously in a much safer form of like fight or flight or whatever you would say, yeah, but it puts you into this purpose and I got to get to this next spot. I got to get through this, and yeah. it, it allows you. It gives you like this this sense of push yourself, if you will. So I I think what you're trying to say, and I've said this to a lot of people, it took you know. It was shortly after that ride, it kind of sunk in. For me, riding a motorcycle, ripping around on a Harley is the closest feeling, the adrenaline rush that I get from doing this is the closest feeling that I've ever, that I can find to flying a helicopter at low level at, you know, night on night vision goggles, night vision goggles in a combat environment. You know, it's a, it's a very similar You know, last night, you know, hour 16 of that ride, like, I'm fucking tired. It's dark. I can't, you know, see very well. You know, I start getting in my head, like, you know, you know, what if that car fucking cuts me off and I crash and I'm out here in the middle of nowhere by myself? And, uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, those challenges are, it's very similar. So I, I figured out a long time ago that, that, you know, riding that motorcycle is the closest adrenaline rush. It's just a replacement and high. So would you say that, like, finding new ways to challenge yourself as a biker or as a motorcyclist mm-hmm. kind of helps? I mean, like you said, the adrenaline rush thing. But, like, the challenge, right? It does. Like, when you're yeah. like, hey, I'm going to go to this trip to Utah. Fuck it. I'm going to go rip to Dallas yeah. and go on this 2,500-mile detour yeah. to do a podcast, right. essentially. Yeah. 
and there becomes this challenge where you did an iron butt yesterday, and now you're going to do another one tomorrow, right? On the way home, yeah, it's it's exactly it, and and uh, yeah, so it helps, um, you know. But the fucking, I mean, a lot of the guys that that you yeah, ride yeah. with are here. They're they're vets, like they get it, and you know, like those demons are always there. So, like I'm on this ride and having a good time, you know, and it just kind of it pushes them away mm-hmm. for a little while, you know. But they come back. You know, and then yeah. I then I go and jump on another ride for a little while. Um, you know, so it's just a constant, you know, struggle to. It's, to, it's like you're you're, you're but playing musical chairs a little bit with. It is, yeah. Um, but I'll say, you know, the friendships that I've made, and you know, everybody, you've got your core, you know, group chat group. <laughs> you know, you got your core group of guys. You're the group of guys you're going to go rip around the country with soon. Yeah. Like that's your core group. You can talk to them about anything, and they'll call you out on your bullshit. And you know they're going to be there for you, yeah. And they're not going to fucking make fun of you for you know riding all the time, or they're not going to give you shit about riding a bunch, or you know it's like you can be you, mm-hmm. and that's you know what you know a, a smaller military unit is is a lot like that. You know you're you're tight, and you go through a lot of horrendous shit, and you get to know people. In strange ways, like you go on. If you've never been, this is for everybody else. If you've never been on a long, multi-day, multi-state ride with other people, like do it, and you're going to get to know that person really yeah. well, really fast, and you're going to learn like if you want to fuck with them later or they're going away. Like if we, if me and my guys were going to start a club, we would be the tightest knit club in the world. Fuck yeah, and I think to your point, talking about clubs, like. More clubs should, you know, and I think a lot of them do. If you do take a trip with them, you see a lot. But yeah, he said something there that kind of like reminded me, and I fucking lost it. But it was it was a good one. But it's uh, D- getting to know everybody. Yeah. So you know, you make that long trip, you're going to get to know everybody, and you're going to get That's to know it. them at such a personal level. Like some of my buddies know know me, the real me, more than more than my wife. <laughs> So that's, they know more, that's something more that's, than my kids. And and that's probably because I'm an asshole. Like yeah. your last episode with uh with uh the Charlotte. the Thundermax guy. Oh, Millhouse. Uh, yeah. Like you guys got on that subject a little bit about, you know, taking off and, you know, saying, Okay, you know, like she's got it, she'll deal with it. And now you guys have figured out, you know, how to take care of the home front yeah. before you yeah. blast well, off. And that's what I was wanting to talk about, or I wanted to kind of chime in on is I don't mean this in a bad way, but you know, our, our little bike night with, with us core group of guys that go there that do this trip together, we're our most authentic selves around each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we're also like in a circle where we're least judged or least going to be you. Any word that exactly. we say is going to be it's thrown back. It's not going to be face. fucking pushed back at you. And yeah. so that's you know, unfortunately, and I don't. I'm not saying this is right. Like you just said, it's it's just kind of like the nature of the beast of relationships, yeah. in a sense, is that I get to let out all of that mm-hmm. and come home without any pent up me, yeah. pent up me, right? Because yeah. the same thing is like. I don't think my wife is the exact same person with me as she is when she's alone. I hope or not. Or with her friends. Yeah, like, I would hope not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it, it's and I don't, I don't fault her for it, but I do want to make her feel as comfortable as possible. Yeah. To where she can say whatever she thinks or feels, and I'm not going to jump to some conclusion yeah. of like you're a bitch or, right. or something like that. You know? Yeah. And I don't want the same thing to happen to me. So, right. but that's a hard thing that I think is the maturity of of adults Mm -hmm. in relationships and trust me we've had our issues with the wives which we all love our wives and our ladies they've had a hard time dealing with how much we've enjoyed doing that right and it's not it's nothing against them because at the end of the day like i i would love to do that with my wife but i don't think i could ever experience traveling on a motorcycle the way i do with my friends with my wife not at all so no, it would be a great experience on its own, but it would never be that. Right. Yeah. And honestly, and that would never be doing it with her. Uh, so. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm trying you to save myself a little bit. <laughs> right. If, if you're an asshole, I'll sit in that rowboat with you because those guys, Kyle and Jones, and maybe a couple more, those guys, there's a 
they know more about me than than my chick does on yeah. certain levels. That Absolutely, stuff that I just feel comfortable. Whether it's, I don't know, we've all and the thing about it, a, a group core group like that is it's not like every day we're boohooing or anything right. like that. It's no. when you need them, they're there. It's yeah. almost like insurance. It's, That's it. You pay into it and you get the nut kicks and you bust balls. And yeah. You get the trips, everything you grow. But when you need when you you know it's constant deposits. But when you need that withdrawal, yeah, they're there. Right. And Absolutely, those are guys that. Yeah, yeah. and you got to have that. And, you know, he made, he mentioned, Jace mentioned that, you know, when you come back from the ride, you're able to kind of get rid of a lot of stuff and come back as you, you know. And so guys that are, are dealing with PTSD and those demons, you know, you've got a whole nother layer of bullshit that, you know, so going on these, on these long rides or hanging out with your buddies – you know, helps to kind of get rid of that stuff. Um, you know, when I when I first retired, I was trying to, you know, at the same time as I'm trying to figure out what to do with the bike, I was trying to figure out a way. When I when I left the Navy, I mentioned it before, it wasn't on the best terms. Um, and, like, I, when I... When I left North Island, the, the, the base there in Coronado, when I left it after I left my last squadron, I didn't go back to North Island. I didn't, I didn't step foot back on that base for probably four years. Like, I, I was humiliated. Didn't, you know, I felt embarrassed if I was going to go back. Yeah. You know, so I just didn't, I just didn't, just didn't do it. Um, you know, so... You, you know, you've got, we've got these different layers of shit that we're trying to deal with. And so after I retired, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to try to get past that. How can I do that? And, you know, I was like, okay, I need to start getting involved with some veteran groups somehow. Yeah. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to go stand in a fucking soup line. Like, that's just not me. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go build houses. Like, I've got a light bulb that's been needed to be changed in my house for like a year and a half. How many? What was the joke? <laughs> Sorry. I fucked that one up. How many? <laughs> how many guys does it take to how change the light skins? bulb? Just one. Just one. Yeah, I get it. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> that's fucking original. That's good. Better not be named Julia when we go get our our food. Right. Exactly. But um, Julia so Julia. <laughs> so I so I was like, okay, I need to figure out a way. To, to try to get involved in veteran stuff somehow. I was like, well, you know, I've got a business degree. You know, like I know I know that stuff really well. So I I've, I kind of reached out, leaned out with a, a veteran organization that has a just a big fund. And then they screen uh, all these other organizations and then – and then give money out to them. So I'm an advisor for an organization like that. So I was like, okay, that, you know, that helped. And it didn't really make that big of a change for me that yeah. I had hoped. But, um, you know, so I was just trying to figure out different ways to to try to move past, you know, some of the uh, the bad feelings I had towards mm -hmm. the military and, you know, try to, try to heal that one part so that I can deal with other shit. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's an everyday struggle. It's yeah. an everyday fucking thing. Like it, yeah, I hate to try to compare anything to like being in that shoes, you know, but you know, I, like I don't even want to, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But good on you on as far as trying to get into something constructive. Yeah. And yeah. Positive as yeah. far as trying to work through, there's a lot of people that, Turn to negative and destructive things. So right, you're already winning. You know what I mean. And if you if you're still looking to find whatever it is that's going to scratch that itch, yeah, and that's it. I, I mean, I and I know I've said it before. There's you've got a ton of followers that are listening and watching your stuff that that are veterans. You know that are struggling with this shit. Yeah, every single day, and um, you know you just got to know that that there are ways. You know, you just got to figure out the outlet, and it's not easy to. To, to find that outlet but what i can tell you um is that getting on a fucking harley davidson and ripping for thousands of miles across yeah. country with a tight group of friends 
is going to help. I think where it probably gets hard, and I hate to be the one to add, like, you're going to have a hard time, um, is, the, is the guys that maybe do get out of the military or are in the military who have a who who built a lifestyle while in the military, mm-hmm. like wife and multiple kids, and yeah. did this and did that, and then they're stuck in this lifestyle that they might not even be able to live anymore when they get out, right? right? Yeah. So even the the concept of buying a Harley and going to rip it across for a weekend across some of the country mm-hmm. is out of the question for them. Yeah. And so they've those I I, I guess I'm more worried about because yeah, they have no, that's a, a less of a way to escape from this this kind of world they created within this world that they created to to make the world they live in better. Right. That makes no, sense, I get it. Know? Yeah. And I I I say this all the time. Like people ask me like, "Okay, well, how are you how are you able to go and, you know, like this this ride that I'm on right now, mm-hmm. I just decided probably 3 weeks ago yeah. that I was going to go." I left last Thursday. What's today? I don't even know what day Monday. it is. Monday. And so I'm not going to be home till late Tuesday night. Maybe Wednesday morning. If I was out and, and you know, stop in Phoenix, it'll be early Wednesday morning. You know, but that's almost a solid week. Yeah. You know, kind of impromptu. Um, so, you know, I'll get that all the time. People half joking like, oh, I follow your shit. It pisses me off that you're always gone. You know, they love it, but they're also, you know, oh, dude, understand them. But so my only response is like, hey, man, like I, I don't make a ton of money. You know, people are like, oh, well, you got a pension. Well, 47% of my pension goes to my ex-wife because we were married for 19 yeah. years. 19 of the 20 years that I was in the military, I was married to my ex-wife. 47% of it is fucking gone. I don't even see it. Like the, the, the government just sends it yeah. straight to her. So like there's not that much there you know i i get disability from a few things um you know so like my basic necessities like i know if i didn't sell a single house i know my mortgage would be paid you know i can keep the lights on and buy food and you know maybe one older car and only one bike yeah um you know it'd be fine um but what i've done is I just I've I figured out how to live within my means. Like I know I know who I am and I know I know what what makes me happy and what keeps me healthy. I'm still trying to balance of, you know, what's gonna make me happy and make my wife happy. I'm not very good at that. We that's, all, we're that's, all figuring that I'm out. I'm an asshole when it comes to that and I need to figure that out. But I'm you know, I have figured out at least for me what's going to keep me sane and what's going to keep me from blowing my fucking brains out. And it's, it's doing, you know, so this stuff on that same note, like that's one thing that I've always preached to my wife and she understands this, but I'm a firm believer in, you know, take care of your own happiness first. Yeah. You can't make and somebody else happy if you're a miserable. Exactly. Piece of shit. And, and you know, Ultimately, that also will open up the, the the truth of whether or not, you know, as you're on that journey of self, you know, reflection and making your focusing on you being happy and coming to the table happy instead of getting to the table sad and depressed and wanting and pissed to, off and, and want to take the happiness yeah. of someone of your wife and your right away from your your kids because yeah. kicking you know, the dog and all that yeah, shit. fucking dogs, man. Yeah, yeah and I so love dogs. I, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to do, you know, because a lot of people have a hard time finding what truly makes them happy, happy. Right. That's probably one of the biggest questions I, I think. Cause every, when you first get in a relationship, everybody's happy with each of other course. because they it's are the, the source period. of happy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like you're hot. The sex is great. You know, we do whatever. I can say whatever and you laugh about it. Right. Like, oh yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm funny. And not too long. Like just me breathing. You know, there've been times where my breathing has made my wife want to fucking slip my throat, yeah. you know, and vice versa. Um, you know, but so, so what I figured out is that if I live within my means, yeah. so I know, I know the lifestyle that I want to live. And again, I, I am not doing a good enough job of balancing the lifestyle that Juan wants and the lifestyle that, that Juan's wife yeah. wants to live. I got to do much better at that. Um, but I've, I've figured out what it takes 
for me to make sure that that the wife and five kids everybody has everything that they need yeah like kids you got they're all old now the youngest one's 18 so you know they're all either in college or graduated and moved on it's like you got to get a job you know like yeah i'm not buying your shit you know you get a job i bought just about all of them we bought their car and paid for their insurance but it's like i'm not mm. you know you need to get a job and you you know you gotta yeah you gotta provide and so you know i i i figured out what what it takes to crack that nut and i do that and you know and then and then some and it's enough to where everybody's got what they need and i can go and do an impromptu seven day you know it'll end up being four thousand mile yeah rip you know so to to give you perspective of our age group of our core group of guys we're all roughly between 33 and 40 Mm -hmm. right and move that with the timeline of us being friends for the last almost five years We've all kind of gone through that motion of figuring, like getting a career, buying shit that maybe we wanted, maybe we didn't want, maybe we thought we wanted. Right. Uh, obviously, a marriage or two in between some of us, right? Yeah. And what I what I try to explain to people is that you know, for me, it's it's probably not the best representative because people will see my bike and they'll be like, "I want to do a bike trip on that bike," right? Well, I used to do them on not that bike. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not the point. The bike, how cool or not cool it is, is not the, it doesn't replace how it feels and how it will change you as a person by doing the trip. The trip, the memory of the trip is what's more important than the material possession. Honestly, not the same at all, but kind of close road trips. Yeah. You know, if you travel by doing road trips, it makes you appreciate things. If you do that with your wife or your friend, it makes you get to a deeper con- connection of, of conversation Absolutely. that you probably wouldn't do as normal as, as you would. That's the reason why I've wanted to take road trips with my kids. Yeah. Because at some point, he's going to be done listening to everything he mm-hmm. can, or at some point, we're going to be in a place where he doesn't have yeah. service anymore. So he's like, where are we at? I'm like, glad you asked, buddy. So right there, that's where Gettysburg took place. And, yeah. You yeah. Know. And that's, you know, part of the guilt that I, that I True. have to deal yeah. with is that I was fucking gone during yeah. that period. And then when I came back and divorced their mother, they fucking hated me. So like, they didn't want to go on a road trip. They didn't want to yeah. do anything, yeah. you know, and now they're, you know, they're 20. My, so I have three step kids and two of my own kids. So my two boys are 20 and 23. You know, like the ship sailed. You know, I, like um, again, I don't want to go super sad on it, but is somebody that same thing didn't have the best relationship with my dad younger, and then patched it up, lost him too early to cancer, but patched it up, and it's it's never too late. Man. Yeah, you're you're fucking cool. I don't I don't know your kids, Dude, but yeah, they've got to camping. Be, yeah, just, hey, look, I, it. Yeah. let's go out there. It's just us guys. We're all sleeping on tents, so it's not weird. And uh, I don't know. There's many ways. My daughter's 20 now, yeah. right? And I'm struggling to figure out how to connect with her yeah. because I don't necessarily want her to feel like, okay, I did my part till she was 18, and now she's the yeah. world's problem. Like, right. also, you know, I pray to God she doesn't get pregnant anytime. I Jesus. do not want to be a fucking yeah. granddad at all. Yeah. And I don't. You know why I don't want to be a granddad? Because I don't think I'll live up to what a grandparent's supposed to be. Yeah. Because I'm a selfish dude trying to ride bikes cross country right now. I'm not trying to go That's like yeah. watch your kid and yeah, I don't don't bring your kid over. I don't want to fucking babysit him. It's your kid. You then, figure it out. Then I, it's like that coke thing <laughs> right. I was telling you about. What if I like it? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and what if I like it so much I don't want to ride? That's hey, fucking scary. Rain, I'm sorry I <laughs> compared your future baby to cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. So, so yeah, I mean, motorcycling, in, in my opinion, man, motorcycling ha- is so much more than surface value. Like we, we joked on in this podcast right now, we joked about memes. We joked about like these TV shows and these movies that came out that are laughable, but at the, at the core essence of motorcycling, they w- it would not have been such a part of our, the last hundred plus years of human culture if it didn't do something to people. Right. right? Is it dangerous? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, it is. And the is way it cool some of shit? us ride, it's yeah. really dangerous. It can yeah. bring you a lot. It, it's like a drug in itself, When, especially when you ride solo. When you ride solo far, 
you know, I think Chris Callen at CycleSource said it best. Like, every every 50 miles, like, it's another onion you're peeling back of your layers mm -hmm. of shit that's in your mind. Mm -hmm. And then sooner or later, you're going to – you're not thinking about what's taking place at, at home right now. You're not thinking no. about what you should have done this year. Now you're just, like, in this – in this, survival this mode space in your head where yeah. you like you don't get to go a lot it's a it's some kind of meditation being on the road yeah you know what i mean and you get to just kind of work out some real problems in your life yeah. you know what i mean maybe it's like you get to that point where you're a little bit more retrospective about who you've been to people in your life yeah. and you kind of come to those terms of like oh That's shit probably why i'm talking so fucking mushy is i've spent the last fucking i've spent 2400 miles yeah. yeah in the last four days you know, in my own head. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to happen. It's a good place to be, man. Yeah, it's going to You know, I, I think it makes you way more empathetic to the people in your life. Yeah. And maybe a little bit more empathetic to your own purpose in life. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And you, you've mentioned it on a couple of different occasions. Like, you know, you, you ignore your significant other because you're so excited about going for a rip. And, yeah. you know, and then the very next day you're like oh fuck i kind of missed them you know yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's so, it's so i'm trying not to do that this one me and my wife have been on you a really great at all no <laughs> I, I do <laughs> no. i've been trying not to to ignore her in not to ignore her so much and, and to be more attentive to her not really trying i mean we we've been on a great little you know on the roller coasters of what relationships are we've been yeah. on a on a great upward tick yeah um and I think it's because she, we, we both know that we're not going to see each other for almost a month. We've never yeah. done that, and I'm, 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 I'm nervous. Like I, yeah. I have never been that long without my wife, and yeah. since I've known her, yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, uh, I think she. And this is probably. I don't even want to put that out there because <laughs> she might think, "Oh yeah, you're right. I'm gonna. I might not need him after this." <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and for those of us that have deployed a bunch, like we get used to being gone for yeah. like it's it actually, it actually can feel more normal to not be at home. I would so imagine I like, that was my deal for a decade was that my ex wife and I we never fought like hardly at nothing. Yeah. It just you know I just I wanted to be in the fight, you know, so I was gone all the time. And then just over a decade, you know, you kind of grow apart. Yeah. And then it just became easy to not be there. You know, I mean, I would go eight months without seeing my wife. I've always said this mm -hmm. and I don't know if I got it from somebody, if I did, you know, quote them, but I feel like the easiest thing for a man to ever do is work. And, yeah. if, and you're it. It, it, it was, that it was, was the easy thing. Yeah. It was to go. Because that's, you know, work is do this point A to point B or mm -hmm. this plus this. It's such a simple mathematic equation of. Yeah. And we, of, we justify it in our head as like, oh, I'm out providing for you. You know, thank me later. You yeah. know, for, for me, it was like, I'm out defending the country. Thank me, you know, yeah. thank me for my service. And, you know, just keep the home front good. And, you know, it's. it's I like the parallel of the fight. The, almost well, it was your writing like that's what you have to do now you have to do the writing and it's the same thing like i can't tell you how to fight psc i don't have those those demons but i do have the demons of a sometimes painfully average and mundane what you're talking about your job same thing yeah. no passion in it i'm yeah. good at it can do it in my sleep right but as far as does that scratch my itch does that get me out of bed no, no. it doesn't but the writing does. Yeah. It always comes back to the writing. Yeah. And you and need money to buy those parts. So yeah. fucking A. Let's yeah. punch the clock. And I mean, yeah. uh, you, you also might need money to comfort the life. Not saying it's always, but, you know, me and my wife are, uh, we're a team of our household and our livelihood. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm definitely not going to jump on the road and leave her with all the responsibilities. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to at least cut, cushion it with, like, my side of things and whatnot. But, right. You know, unfortunately, like, uh, none of my friends, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like when you have a hobby like motorcycling, you're very, you're interesting to, you're interesting to so many people, male and female, right? If you're a male. Yeah. Like women are interested in you because you're, you're out there like chasing what you, you're passionate about. Right. right. That's yeah. an attractive thing for yeah. people. Until yeah. you're in a relationship and it's kind of a in the way oh, of like the of the, the relationship that's here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
But at the core of it, you know, it's still, you know, I feel like we're all very attentive to our, our women. We're very, you know, we're, we're, I feel like we're good dudes because we get to go be guys and have these own experiences and then come back. And I think we're more, you know, like you said, uh, we talked about what I usually say about like, uh, when I'm preparing for a big trip, all I can think about is a trip. Like, yeah. do I have the right shit? Is it going to go well? My bike's solid. How am you I going to pack my tent, my yeah. camping gear? It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. It's a challenge. It's something new. It's a new anomaly in an everyday life. Right. And then, you know, as soon as you, as soon as, you know, the first couple of days on a, on a two week trip, you're like, holy shit, we're fucking doing this. Like yeah. everybody's giving you fucking devil horns going down yeah. the road. Everybody's like, you know, the first couple of nights at the bar, everybody's yeah. like rum springer as fuck. You know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? And then after all that fucking new wears off and you're like, oh shit, I'm in a bike trip. Yeah. This is it. All you can think about is like, oh man, I wonder what my wife's doing. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking think that shit. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm selfish though. I'm an asshole. It's, yeah. I'm kind of on record for it. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like, I mean, I miss her. I hope she's doing good. I hope nothing bad is happening to her. Yeah. So and that's. Like, oh, I wish I was on the couch right now. Like, yeah. fuck that. Yeah. Fuck uh, that. I'd live on yeah. the road if I, I could. Yeah. I, that's, and that's where I struggle is I'm, I'm his nature. Like, yeah. that's, that's me. Yeah. And, but I know, like, I'm 50 here in a couple of weeks. Like, I know. I know what I'm supposed to do at yeah. this age, you know, and so I'm trying to, trying to balance that, and it's a fucking battle, you know, and it's, but it, you know, being deployed so much, you, you know, I got very used to being gone, yeah, you know, so that's it's a very normal alone from your family, yeah, it was yeah. a very normal thing, and I had a lot of fun doing it, and you know, and then you know. You come back home and you're like, oh, twiddle your thumbs, you know. So it's, I'm trying to not, I'm trying not to repeat that yeah. cycle. And I can see that, I, I can see my personality doing that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I see, you know, I know the mistakes that I made before. And and I am making a conscious effort to not repeat that. Yeah. But I do have some self-destructive tendencies, you know, like I, I just do. And, you know, I'll shoot myself in the foot all the time. And so I'm trying, you know, and I see it now and I, you know, and my yeah, wife will Self awareness is a is a good a quality to acquire in growing, you know what I mean? It is. And Sometimes the worst thing is like when you're not self aware at all and you know, you, you just blindly don't see the things that you're doing that might not be the best thing right. in 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 life. Yeah. Not to say that like being self aware uh, excuses you of your faults, absolutely but, not. It's you know, yeah, it's better than you just thinking. Step your one: faults realize are you're an asshole. Yeah, you've at least got the first step. Right. Uh, step one: real, realize you're an asshole. Step two: try to fix it. You know. So that's I'm I'm in. Well, you know, maybe maybe traveling on motorcycles appeals to. A like because I'm very much like you and very in, in a lot of ways. Like I'm. When I, when I'm in my family setting, like not so much my wife, but you put me around my mom, my grandmother, the rest of my family, the extended family, I am like quiet. Yeah. Which is rare for someone that makes a living doing this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just the last get, knockdown drag out that my wife and I had was over that exact same subject. Yeah. We went up to her sister's house for her mother's birthday party and i just mentally wasn't there in my mind i'm like okay physically i'm going to go do this so i should get credit for going to do this you know you're welcome i'm not out riding with my buddies and then i'm there and i'm just detached yeah you know part of that is you know i mean i genuinely am an introvert like i'm just you know, my wife gets confused because she's like, you know, when you when you're with your friends, you just talk all the time. And I'm like, yeah, those are my fucking friends. Like, you know, like I trust them with everything, and yeah. you know, it's easy. But I don't go talk to strangers. And you know, she's like, how come you can't be that way when you're with my family or in this situation? 
And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Well, you might like say I, something that they wouldn't understand because they're not in the same realm. Yeah. Like, Jason, so you, what, what you're saying, I've heard, like, mm-hmm. the exact, like, almost verbatim. This this guy, for the last four or five years, like, sage, like, I'll have these things where I'm like, dude, I'm up against the wall. She's hitting me things. And as I, he'll, like, almost like Yoda, Luke Skywalker, like, he's trying to hit her oh, with yeah. this, this, and I go back, dude, with an arsenal. I'm like, listen. I'm tired of the no, the always and nevers and uh, yeah. don't compare me to your friends or don't compare us to my yeah. friends because you're gonna right. lose every time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Always and never. If when when the women start saying that, that means that they they have found two things that you always do and you never do. I and all you want to do is always be on your bike and you will never yeah. participate yeah. in this. Like yeah, it's and as you know when they say that, it's like yeah, you're right. So how do I? Well, how do I? The, this is the realization. And if that's the way they're feeling. Like you can't dismiss you can't the way dismiss they're feeling because whether they're obviously wrong, yeah. they're all fucked up, and we're right, obviously. Yeah. But, it's not even that. But it, it, let me tell you, you know, what it that's is. Their let, me, let me give you some wisdom. What Here it is? Go. Let's hear it. What it is, in my opinion, I'm, I'm making this up as I go. <laughs> no, what I I fucked up. Um, yeah, I fucked up because I thought I had something there. <laughs> oh, you got it. Come on. Come on. Well, the always and never thing. I They're mean, They're always wrong. Their shit's wrong. Okay. They're always right. The, I'm going to wing this. This might sound like stupid shit, but ultimately, people in a relationship have to accept who the other people are. Exactly. Ultimately. Right. Um, some people in a relationship are going to be better at certain aspects yeah. and, and worse at others. Absolutely. Um, I do make a conscious effort when I'm out with – put it like this. I'm in a weird spot where my wife lives in Texas, and none of her family or friends are from here. Yeah. So I, I hit the – technically the lottery on my end of things where I don't have to go – I never oh, had to go to any have to go baby to showers for her yeah. friends and bridal parties. And right. We got to go to fucking Samantha's wedding. I've right. been friends with her. I don't have to do any of that shit. Yeah. So again, feeding into my selfishness, right? Yeah. Um, I think that maybe in this, I'm, I'm, I'm just word playing here. Maybe if people all accept a little bit of selfishness in who they are, mm-hmm. and maybe put out what they really want out of themselves on the table, right? And it, it, it'll allow like two people to come to the table and and find out what they can get from each other to make each other happy. Yeah. And. That's one of those things that, like, you don't ever bring that up in the beginning of a relationship. When yeah. you're when you're on Tinder, you're like, hey, so, you know, do you think you're going to like bikes for a long time or do you think you're going to fucking throw it back in my face two years after you're <laughs> right. over it? Like, yeah, you're not going to bring that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's like, hey, dude, uh, let me see them titties real quick. Right, exactly. I'm not supposed to say that because yeah. women, nope, right? Stop. Um, but at the same time, I just feel like people aren't honest with themselves all the time. Yeah. And what happens... I think the hardest thing is some, I, I do have friends who have women or are in relationships with women who have this amazing opportunity to completely be themselves with each other. Yeah. And I'm not saying that like, because I can't be a hundred percent myself with my wife, that we have a problem. It's just a normal thing that I think that That's we normal. are more human nature. open-minded about saying stupid ass shit that we would be embarrassed Right. To say in front of the woman that we're trying to get laid by. Right. Or try to make love you. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a fuck if Jaden loves me. Right. I know yeah. that he's going to come back and see me at bike night, and that's yeah. all I need. Like, yeah. he's going to come back sooner or yeah. later. I might say some stupid shit at one point and be like, that dude's off the rocker. Yeah. He tried to finger me or something. Right. Like you know? Yeah. But Yeah. And I think it all comes back to that self-awareness thing. Like, if you... But... But actual self awareness, I think it's a pretty rare thing. You know, like we we are so accustomed in in our society to to get more. You know, like you know, I got one bike, so I need another one. And you know, mm-hmm. Jace has got this fucking cool bike, so I got to fucking you know, I got to step up to that. And you know, the homie in the group chat just, just got, got a new ST. Yeah. Just got you know built a one thirty one. So I'm like, fuck. Now I got. So this is the I got to go too. do this and. And what I think also happens in some relationships, not all, and and like I said, none of this is bad. This is just like maybe understand these things when they come along. But I think some people always have the grass is greener syndrome. Yeah. What they want, like when they're in a relationship where everything is 
like wake up at seven, go to work, come home. Their whole life, their marriage, their whole fucking existence is some kind of routine, it's right? On autopilot. To yeah. be with a biker, it shakes up that routine because we're like, yeah. hey, it's Tuesday night. Let's go to bike night. Let's go to the bike night. Let's go fucking pound some and beers. When and they first, lot. when they first come around, when yeah. when you first get with a chick, she's like, fuck yeah, yeah. This is excitement. Like yeah. people want, ex- like especially in relationships, they want excitement when it. But they don't understand that they're their own worst enemy. They're the ones that take the excitement out of their life. Yeah. Right? When they first come date you, they're like, fuck yeah, let's go to bike night. Let's go to happy hour. Let's do all these things that you do with your friends. Right. I'm having fun. Or are you playing? Are they playing the game? Yeah. Are they playing the game of trying to get with you and get you? And like, I'm going right. to change them. Yeah. yeah. You're you, not gonna, you can't turn this on and off. Really. Yeah. But they like that, right? Yeah. And then if it works out well. You know, you have a great relationship and you have excitement because there's a lot of spontaneity in your relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not necessarily with someone that has such a schedule that they're like, you know what? I got to be up at 4 a.m. So every night at 8, I want my fucking dinner on the table so I can go to bed at 9. Yeah. Right after The Price is Right or whatever the fuck comes on on TV these days, right? Yeah. But then when they... When they finally get you to be that guy, that guy that doesn't go to bike night every Tuesday, the guy that doesn't have friends, the guy that doesn't have this life outside of you, then they're bored and they look for a guy like you just were to go fucking be with. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens so much in relationships. I used to hang out in a VFW back in the day. (laughs) And that's all I saw over and over again was listening to these stories of these old fucks in there. That drinking, like rekindling with these flames they had when they were 30. They were wild, but they weren't wild. They weren't quite ready to be together. So they got in shitty relationships for the last right. 20 years. Exactly. And then next thing you know, they're 54, 58 yeah. at VFW drinking beers together. You know what I'm saying? With their high school crush. Yeah. Yeah. After the other chicks had three kids now, this dude's got fucking four marriages. Right. Like, yeah. They should have just fucking. But it's, but we can't do that though. I mean, it's just, it's, it's in our. At least in our culture, it's you got to have more, yeah. and so to get more, you got to work more, and you know then you're your house poor and your bike poor and your car poor, and you have to go to work to fucking pay for all this shit, and then, then you're miserable and you can't keep your your spouse happy because you're fucking miserable and yeah, it's a it's a fucking if, shitty circle. If you're caught up in that rut. I would seriously suggest taking like a gram, gram and a half of mushrooms and watching Fight Club. Is that it? Don't worry about the actual fights. Like, listen to the words he says. Yeah. You're not your fucking paycheck. You're not your fucking furniture. You're not your khakis. You're not insert the next thing. Yeah. You're just not. Your life's about living. And it all comes back to riding. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's that's where it stops and starts. That's it. For us bikers, riding became that that thing that gave us, that, that gives you... Life, if in a sense, like, and not to sound fucking gay as AIDS right now, but it really does give yeah, you. It sounds cliche. There's no way you can say it without somebody being able to do the jerk off symbol and oh, roll their eyes. Well, right. dude, okay, roll your eyes, but I, I don't know. I'm pretty happy. Yes. Are you genuinely happy with your life? And I'm not happy in all aspects, but this is my I, this is my center. Like right. that's for another woke, yeah. woke white girl term. Like I found my center. Right. Everything else, <laughs> I'll figure it the fuck out. But this this is the core. This is not changing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and like I said, I, I think that um I think a little bit of selfishness and open selfishness to like look, I, I want to make sure that I am happy as a person. You've got to be. That's yeah. the thing. That and that's so yeah, I'm and that you know, so I think that's the constant struggle is trying to to get your significant other to understand that that, you know, I can't give you anything if I'm if I'm empty. Yeah. If I'm empty and I want to blow my fucking brains out, how am I gonna, you know, be present yeah, at yeah. your niece's baby shower? <laughs> yeah, like, stuff. How the fuck is that gonna happen? The other concept or the other thing to that is with, you know, in, in my opinion, at least as as my as I've kind of adopted somewhat of this lifestyle or this concept, um, I find that the 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 sincerity of my actual feelings of wanting to be around my wife and be with her and be present with her, when I do it on my terms, it's so much more organic and it's real and it's like yeah. a real version of me that wants what is what she wants me to want, right? right. Um, unfortunately, I mean, it, it, and I think it's also for her as well. Like sometimes she's doing shit that she knows I wanted to do that she doesn't want to do. It's like a, it's a game, right? Yeah. Or not a game, but it's like a, 
it happens. Yeah. But man, like whenever I've fulfilled my own needs mm-hmm. and I'm overfilled, that's when I feel way more willing to dump this extra onto the loved ones around me. Exactly. And I know I'm solid and I'm whole. Now I want to share this love and this happiness with everybody else around me. And that's when it's genuine for me. Yeah. You know, when it's not is when I'm fucking half full and stressed out and really wanting her to ask me what's wrong with me. So I can say, you never do this. Right. <laughs> you always do that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, and I can see some comments here. We're, we're going to be a fucking meme here pretty soon. The fucking uh, therapy for men. Thanks. Just asshole. that three hours. And uh, I threw this out there earlier. If you don't just want to run through, we don't have to hit, hit everyone. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Uh, did your MBA help with the memes that made me laugh? Yeah, that that is kind of funny, and it kind of kind of does. Yeah, there you go. He's smart, dude. My guy's smart over here. It's Don't a, sleep on him. You're gonna see. Yeah, trouble. I'm gonna be a born free. I told. Yeah, I hope to. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna hook up with you guys. Yeah, big when trouble. You're there, looking forward to that one for sure. Uh, let's see. I, I'm I'm pretty excited because the water burger in and out. That was my main. Have you had a good water burger yet? All right, so I'm okay. Here we go. Camera on you. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> we leave here. Record. I'm gonna take you to get a honey butter chicken biscuit. Fucking a. So spicy. So my reference for Whataburger was 1999 Corpus Christi, Texas. Oh, that's or, right. OG. I, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. And so there was a Whataburger, and right next to it was a. Oh, what the fuck was the? It was a. One restaurant, it was Chinese food and Mexican food. I forget the wok. Wok, it was wok, W-O-K, a mole was the name of the place. Genius. <laughs> Genius. Yeah. The memes write themselves. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, guys would swear by the Whataburger. And like back in 99, I went and I had a couple. I'm like, I just don't get it. Like, it's, it's fucking trash. I don't know about all that. It's fucking trash. Like, I don't know about all that. I, I, I couldn't put the I love trash meme for that today because I wasn't going to eat it to verify it. Like, I'm not going to fucking do it. He's just leaning into it's it. It's fucking like, Man, trash. This whole time I was like, did I meet the Brennan to my Dale? Like, and what, is, Kyle, is Kyle fucking out? Did I meet my new best friend? What I did but not I realize, I did not realize that there was in and out in town. When I pulled into town yeah. and I saw that thing, I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. This place doesn't fucking suck as bad as I thought it would. <laughs> and yeah, so I have so I I hadn't had a Whataburger from 1999 until Arizona Bike Week. When was that? April? This last first April. Off, first off. What? Arizona Bike Week. Arizona in general is not a good representation of what Whataburger is. I feel like purposely all the Whataburgers I've ever had in Arizona and New Mexico hire Haters of Waterburger to go in there and make the establishment okay. look like a shit show. So we what I was gonna say, Chick Fil A Waterburgers over here, they're on their shit over here. Chick Fil A, I got a story. So when I was in, don't, don't let me forget the Waterburger story. Oh. When I was in Pensacola, Florida, for I graduated OCS, so this was 1998, and I'm driving. I got out of officer candidate school, so we're able to finally go out and. I went back. I picked up Just my blasted my wife. danger zone. You know it. <laughs> and I'm driving around. I'm driving around, and I see this red sign. I'm like, "What the fuck is that? What's a Chick Fil A?" I was like, <laughs> "I'm like, all right, whatever, dude." I swear to God, it wasn't until about three years ago a Chick Fil A showed up in Santee, kind of in East yeah. County where I was at. And I was at the gym one day, and it turns out this this I was at the gym. This guy was the owner, and then, and we got talking, and I was like, "So, so what do you do?" And uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, I I own the you know the new Chick Fil A that's going in in Santee." I was like, "Chick Fil A," and I was like, "Motherfucker!" It took me fucking thirty years for that light bulb to come on. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea. But at least you didn't No go. idea. And it's fucking good, too. It is, yeah. Like that. Did you go around uh, telling people, like, hey, guys, have you had Chick-fil-A? This is the shit. <laughs> no, I didn't. Because like, I never just went. yourself to no harm, no No, and foul. I never went. Yeah, no, I never said it. Yeah. Because I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, this? you have sweet people in your life. And I never went. Just like, let him go. It's like, I'm like, this must be another southern fucking thing. Like, I don't know what the fuck is That shit's nationwide. Did you like, pronounce it? 
Mimi's at the beginning too. <laughs> yeah. But man, when I finally went, my my younger son was like, "Oh He's yeah, like, this memes, is so good." Fuck. It's like this is good. I'm like, "Okay, well let's go." And I got it. I was like, "Fuck, that is really good." Yeah, it's pretty solid. Yeah, but what a burger's trash. And <laughs> That's all there is to it. In and out is far superior. The French well, fries are better. We could when we leave and here. We leave here. We could go to In and Out. No, I know it's awesome. So I don't. No, I mean to go. for sure. But like, you won't be able. Actually, we can't even get breakfast. It's only nine. Yeah, we no, started this podcast early. Yeah, yeah. Usually these pod, these three hour podcasts yeah. is about eleven thirty yeah, at night. Jesus, and that's so way past my bedtime. But yeah, In and Out's good. And so th- this town kind of redeemed itself when I saw that when I saw that sign. Uh, some of when you were talking about your military service, I was yeah. flashing different pictures of the aircraft you'd, you'd yeah. have up. So. Yeah, so that uh, Bender bike, he's uh, he's an active duty Navy rescue swimmer. Oh, hell yeah. A buddy of mine, great guy. Mm-hmm. should check him check him out. But, uh, yeah, he's got some – he does – he puts some cool content about helicopters up there. Yeah, that was the, the mighty CH-46 Sea Magnet. It wants to go into the ocean. Not fucking cool. Let's see. I thought y'all were seeing C magnet, like P magnet, like, but you were just good, leaning hard into it, like, dude. No, I find hard into the. I find a cunt yeah. magnet. No, okay, no. then. It's the okay. ocean, the ocean, and the helicopter is drawn to it. Gotcha. Not, not good. They didn't C S C. Yeah, not the letter C. Yeah, they 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 in and out. So. Yeah, the hell yeah brothers are at home kicking and screaming about these guys talking about TV shows. Yeah, it's those hell yeah brothers. I would never watch that. Yeah, I never yeah. watched one single episode. That one, the loud mouth. I don't. I think that may be Devin. Yeah, I tried to airdrop a picture of y'all that he he a meme that I told y'all you you'd get memed. It was a uh, one did, of y'all coming together. Did I get memed? I tried to airdrop it to you, but I don't know if it went through. But that's perfect. I love it. I love the uh, the submitted. There's the they're pretty good. Oh, yeah. So he took, yeah, that's good. Yeah. We've got a few guys that that watch this, usually yeah, watch good. the live, that are really good at Photoshop. Yeah. And they'll, they're they known to come through in a matter of minutes. <laughs> that's good. I mean, it's amateur shit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, for an amateur, that's, that's all right. It's on the spot. Yeah, it's fucking it's amateur shit. Uh, yeah, what else is on there? It is real. It is. That. Fuck yeah, it is. Uh, oh yeah. Mouth. What do you think about NFTs? You getting in that game? <laughs> I <laughs> don't even know what the fuck that is. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Like I, I quit paying attention to all that shit a couple of years. Yeah. Like Jay said, I'm very about. get off my lawn when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm just hoping it, it doesn't work out because I don't want to take the time yeah. to yeah. learn about it and get involved. I'm really hoping crypto and that whole yeah. world just like blows up. Yeah. So you are I'm sorry if you're invested hater. in it, but no, I, I don't want know, it to work out. You know what? Part of part of the reason why, and I don't know here, I would suspect it's an issue here as well. But in San Diego, a part of the reason for real estate prices being fucking insane is people are able to put a ton of cash into these deals, and a lot of that cash is coming from crypto. For real? Yeah. Like I, I sold a condo in downtown San Diego, and the uh, the person that bought it cashed out and they had like at 300 grand in fucking crypto they cash it out and because they had so much cash it was like yeah you gotta have it and i have no idea what they started with but i'm sure it's you know i, not I, I think in, in natural human form i'm gonna hate anything i don't understand yeah and what it is is i don't understand it and yeah. uh you know my natural response is yeah, fuck that noise you know what i mean right <laughs> i want to be a part of that shit but yeah but um, when I started seeing when when people were coming to these deals that I was doing with significant cash from crypto, I was like, oh, fuck, like that's that's a real fucking thing. I yeah. think we're pretty much caught up. Yeah. yeah. Steve well, Chamberlain, he's in there. Congrats, Steve. Steve is fun. Yeah, no shit. That's fucking unreal. He's fucking killing it. Yeah, Donnie said, you don't say that about a water yeah. burger. Oh, dude, it's fucking trash, though. <laughs> I mean, he's going back home tomorrow. Nobody will be able to catch him. Yeah, honestly, dude, when I when I first we're gonna get some dudes with help with get back whips that are gonna catch you on your way out of Texas. <laughs> so when show you some when Jace mind. was like, yeah, <laughs> I'll be honest. When you were like, yeah, come on down, do the podcast. I was like. I'm fucking like, there's, I'm gonna walk into the shop. There's gonna be a fucking ambush of like <laughs> good old boy Texas guys, like motherfuckers. <laughs> Somebody spits in a cup, right? Yeah, 
I, I walked in, like, fucking checking behind the door. <laughs> Dude, no, I'm good. You here. came in. I mean, I'm glad you came, but you also came in at, like, one of the busiest weeks of my life as I'm trying to wrap up helmets and a bike yeah, that's going on this trip. It. No, that's good um, shit. Yeah, it's, it's wild. But, uh, no, no, thank you for doing this, man. It, it was fun. Um, no, I was glad. It's Like I said at the beginning, it's an honor. Like, your, your podcast is, you know, one of the main, you know, solid number three. In the whole <laughs> realm of podcasts. Wow. wow. Three in podcasts as well. Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. God damn I it. mean, a solid three. I mean, three is a good number, man. Like, yeah, that's respectable. This is bullshit. Solid number three. Right now, I guess I'm losing to the Dirty Bikers. Yeah. Dirty Biker Podcast. Pro- yeah. There's number a couple one. of, there's a Hell Yeah Brother YouTube channel that's like up there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> is he's <laughs> pissed. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's a, I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of great pod- people come along that are really great. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, what th- the thing about podcasting is, uh, it takes a long time to make money, and, it's consistency. and so consistency is what puts people in that position. That's because it. most companies don't want to work with somebody that's doing something out of the like, <coughs> you know, the lust for it. Like, oh fuck, I got this energy, I got this, we're gonna go full right. force. And most <coughs> most smart companies are like, all right, yeah, yeah, we've seen that energy before. Right. Call me in three months. Right. When that energy is gone and yeah. you've gone through the first like dip yeah. of your enthusiasm yeah. for the same when you're, you're on going. episode 253, yeah, let's let's chat. Yeah. I was lucky. And that's hard. I was lucky. I mean, yeah. I got away with a lot of stupid shit. I said <coughs> it'll probably come back and haunt me later, but for now, it's that discipline, man. Like you can tell. Yeah. Well, with, I care. With your painting stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, that takes serious discipline to to do that. So, I mean, I think that's just in your nature. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I generally, I generally want to do something good. I, I, yeah. I want to, <coughs> I always want to be the best at anything I do. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I think I am, but I do want to strive for that. Right. Um, but at the same time, like I also, I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like if, if I, there's something I can do to make this better, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so that's the point of like, you know, doing this month long trip, doing these but things. But that's not normal though. You yeah. understand that that's not normal. What you're doing is not normal. Well, it it's not normal maybe for certain people, but for me, like in my world, it feels like the only way to do it. Yeah. And that that's why sense. it's not normal. Yeah. So like I mean who else That's why yeah. all my relationship advice is probably not the best. Right. Exactly. But what why does it why does it not have to be normal? Why can't that be normal? I, I mean why is that so Trust me, I've taken it in the shorts. Oh, I can't believe you're going three weeks. And I'm going, bitch, I wonder you're going a month. You don't yeah. even know. But, but what I'm saying is, is do, what, you know, Jay, Jay's going out. And, like, this isn't, I mean, like, him, even when you're move, watching this at home, like, you don't realize everything that's here. Yeah. Like, you know, this isn't. Well, him being gone for a month, that you could even tie that more into work. This is, you know, this ties into what he does. Right. Me, being an average guy that is not in the industry, yeah, you could say why. But even then. Why the fuck not? Right. Like, why? So I save up a bunch of Thursdays and Fridays that I take just because I'm lazy and I don't want to work a full week every now and then and I want to cut corners. Right. So I yeah. save I save a bunch of those up because I'm the guy that I don't call in sick. I mean, I've got to be flu. It's coming out of both ends. I'm, yeah. If I'm hungover, I'm working. Like, yeah. I, it's, I'm down if I don't work. So. Yeah. This is what I save my time up for yeah. is these trips. And I don't, like I said, I get, I get real defensive because I don't like taking in the shorts. If to, Oh, that's sh- why. That's some, it, those are the same kind of people like, oh, it must be nice. Well, yeah, yeah. motherfucker, it must be nice to, yeah. to do what it takes to d- put in the work to do this. It right. didn't just fall on me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, with the podcast but, stuff, it's, um, trust me, like, you know what, honestly, man, I can't tell you, there's been times, especially this year, you know, like, for everybody listening, here's a little behind the scenes of the podcast. We obviously rely on guys like you and a lot of different people in the in this world industry, motorcycle industry, to, to be able to bring on their stories and stuff. But yeah. it was by design of Rogan how Rogan takes his friends and turns his friends into the like the the re- reoccurring guests, like yeah. me and Jaden, Kyle. Or torqued up tray, or the the yeah. fast life crew. We can come down here and do a podcast about anything, anytime. Right. And because of that, if I can't get four guests from out of town to come to Texas, or I can't get these bigger 
you know, not saying bigger in in a derogatory yeah, no, way, but yeah. these more predominantly named known or named people or known people in the motorcycle industry to come do a podcast, I still have to put content out. So right. I found a way with building the community that we've built as a collective effort to bring those guys in and share motorcycle stories right. from non-club perspective, just as individuals who ride bikes. Right. From somebody that works in the mortgage industry to James, who is a banker, to Cody, who's an oil field worker, to myself, who's a, in the trades. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's hard. And I didn't figure that out at first, because at first it was just like, Big name, big name, big name. But yeah. it's almost like I wish I would. I wish I would have started this way and then got to the big names. Yeah. Because I wasn't really good when I first started this podcast. I wasn't yeah. really. I, there might have been some gems of conversations in there, but I really wasn't good at speaking, which I'm still not. But better, I'm more yeah. palatable now. Yeah. But the but, whole. But my whole point in that is is your is the consistency. Yeah. And it's yeah. discipline, man. Like. Fucking every week I have the alert set up so that when a new podcast comes out, it's like ding, and that fucking thing dings all the time. Yeah. You know? So it's being consistent and showing yeah. up and, you know, like you're going to drag all your podcast shit on your cross country ride. Yeah. You know? Like that's not, you know, it's that's stressful. work. It's, it's work. So, it's, it's stressful. So, stressful. <laughs> so you're going to be in your head, yeah. you know, trying to think about that. And that's. Well, you so, know, so when people get pissy about, you know, like people only do this shit so they can hear themselves talk and you know, like, no, like, no, no, that's not, that's not the case. You know, like, yeah, it's not. if, if that was the case, you know, you'd if have, if that was the case, then this podcast 20, would be called Jace's the Fast Life Podcast. <laughs> right. And every time I start this podcast, what's up guys? I'm your host, Jace fucking Hudson. Yeah. Welcome to my show. Yeah. And, like there's, there's. For someone like me who definitely has an ego, there are bigger versions yeah. of egos. There are way more ways you can lean into it. Yeah. It's so predominant in the motorcycle industry. Yeah. But people just are used to it. Like yeah. I, I expect that kind of brand to have an ego, but if if I'm just confident in the work that I've done. Yeah. I'm not necessarily confident in a lot of things, which I say my vulnerabilities yeah, on. You here. do. Yeah. But for sure. You know, people like, oh, that dude's an arrogant cunt. And I'm like, fuck. All right, man. Like, yeah. there are levels to this shit. Yeah. I, you know, put said name from Biker Build Off Show on this sh right now. Right. Let's see how they run it. Yeah. It yeah. ain't going to look the same. Right. Yeah. It's going to be a podcast where they talk about themselves for 35 minutes, and then you show up. You've been in the green room for 45 minutes. Right. You come in for 15 minutes. He asks a couple questions, and he fucking cancels you. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've been there. Well, so next week on the podcast, you know, yeah. they just want to be in the camera, and I don't necessarily want to. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, but it's, it's good fucking work, man. There's a reason why I pick all my friends or my wife to be the models of my bikes. And I, yeah, trust me, I'm I'm not like some dude that body shames myself and feel like I look like a piece of shit. I'm just I like the feeling of making my friends or using yeah using yeah. my friends to to uh, be a part of my world. Yeah, you know whether it's you know, guys like Jaden sitting here on the cameras and helping out and with, with even his perspectives or, or Steve, uh -huh. <laughs> torqued up or torque mag, Steve, no Scott from, uh, from, uh, Arkansas or, or Trey, the, all my friends, what, what people should understand about the fast life podcast is there, there's a big fucking family behind it. Yeah. You know, I might be the one that kind of ultimately benefits from the show. Right. But, I feel like a lot of people benefit from the life the show creates for us in our community. Right, absolutely. And you know, I trust me. No matter how big this thing gets, I just want to let everybody know: if I ever became a millionaire doing this, I will buy at least one exotic car because I've always <laughs> awesome. wanted one. Good, as so you should. I just want everybody to know that. But so don't get pissed off when it happens. One thing I will yeah. never do is I will never you make a bunch of out. money off this industry and not give back. And not sponsor people, not not promote events and shows, yeah. and you know I would never be the flannel company that everybody knows and loves. You know my goal is always to give back and make this scene better than I got it whenever it came into right into my life, if you will. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, absolutely, man. Well, you're doing it. Thank you, and I I admire that. That's I appreciate fucking, it. That's good shit. Anyway, we gotta stop. I'm done. All right, all right, guys. Thank you for watching and. Thank you for coming here, man. That was awesome. Absolutely. Glad we didn't get too deep. <laughs> Fuck. I know. <laughs>
And hopefully my wife didn't watch. Yeah, shit. I didn't even tell 